right, thank you. Um, we are now live. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to our Ordinary Council meeting for Wednesday, the 23rd of November, 2022. My name is Dave Wilson, Deputy Mayor. I am starting the initial pro program of today's meeting in the absence of the Mayor and the Chief Executive who are away on some council business. They have been held up and we hope to see them uh, back later in the later in the uh, in the agenda that may well mean that we have to alter our uh, order of business but uh, i'll inform you of that as we uh, as we progress along uh, i have received apologies from uh, councillor hero and councillor raukawa and i acknowledge that i have councillor jared kelkin on uh, line joining us uh, joining us today um, we do have public forum to oh all those in favour of accepting these apologies? Move, apologies. I'll second Thank it. you. Move from Councillor Carter, seconded from Councillor Lambert. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, so we do have a public forum here today. Uh, today we have Shane Ratama, Hamish Kavanagh and Glenn Young presenting to Council on uh, their vision for a 25 lot uh, subdivision in Hunterville. Welcome along, gentlemen. Um, rules of engagement, so to speak. We have uh, 10 minutes for you to uh, present to us, uh, and that does include um, question time from councillors. So how you choose to use that time is entirely up to you, uh, but we welcome you to come up and present to council on what your uh, what your vision is. Um, probably best in this end, Shane, actually, because of the way the cameras are loaded, and we are, we are live and uh, on, um, on Zoom. So. Leave it up to you. All right, well, uh, kia ora koutou. Um, thanks very much to uh, the RDC for allowing uh, Hamish and I and Glenn to come in today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Shane Russell. I'm a local business owner from the Hunnable region, born and bred. And uh, along with Hamish, we are the directors of um, RNC Land Holdings, which is uh, primarily a land development company. Uh, we saw an opportunity a while back, probably 12 months ago, to buy a parcel of land on Kutukutuku Road and develop that into... Um, into 25 sections. We saw a bit of a gap in the market in Hunnable for um, affordable housing, and there's certainly been a lack of housing since both Hamish and I have businesses and trying to get people settled in the area. It's been extremely difficult to find over the last sort of 12, 24 months. So that's been our main drive. Um, we've done a lot of um, consultation with Iwi, so we've, um, we've done a fair bit of work, which Hamish is going to talk about with uh, Stream and protecting that. So we've got Ngāti Apa and um, Ngāti Hoati and uh, we've really shared our vision, how we want to look after that part of the, um, of the awa and, um, and you know, put some real significance back into the whenua and into the land. So that's pretty much my 10 cents. I'll pass it over to Hamish. Yeah. Afternoon all, I'm Hamish Kavana from Vinegar Hill. We've got quarries, business in town, transport, livestock, rural transport. And with Shane, we've gone into the subdivision. So far what we've done this is the Spinger area up here. We put a walkway along the stream that we'd like in our vision to join up with Queen's Park, which is through the middle there. So we've done the walkway, we've limestoned it, we've planted all the creek with natives and grasses, native grasses, totras, coal fires, and lots of other native plants in there. That's all done, ready to go, and so we're just ready to roll <laughs> and we'll let Glenn our, this is Glenn our server and we'll carry on. Please guys, questions for these two gentlemen? No, right. So I'm just hoping my computer's not going to shut down on me. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor, for your time today. So for those not familiar with the site, um, Shane Hames were fortunate to purchase this triangle. I haven't got a pointer in this. This is one parcel of land with an existing farmhouse in there. And part of that, that vision was literally to it's unserviced at the moment. The service has stopped to the southern side of the little um, bridge just where the uh, Pereira uh, flows through. So they've, they've looked at subdividing the, the existing farmhouse off with the residential development um, in the northern uh, triangle there. This is the last piece of undeveloped uh, land yet to be um, rezoned, if you like, in, in Hunterville. So we're very keen to get this on the market. One of the things we, we, we got taken on along the journey with, with the council was to provide the stream at this stage. So we've actually vested 
Uh, the walkway, which is, if you can see in the blue, the DP five seven seven one three five, that was numbered across the middle there. That walkway is now in your ownership. You actually own that uh, six metre strip of land. Uh, that was a chain of formed a walkway through there, which is looks really great. The the frustrate well, the frustration, the the concern we have is how do we ensure that that is given effect to and links back through uh, Queens Park, as Hamish has alluded to. Is and, and hopes to work with Lions. There's been a lot of work in Queens Park with the walks through there and the bridge through there. But that again hasn't linked through. So part of the gentleman's vision is how do we actually bring those those residences in through Queen's Park into what we call downtown Hunterville. Uh, as you'd be aware, Katuka Kruger Road is, is currently unserviced for any pedestrian access and limited serviceability. So what we were keen to talk to you about today, if we just flick through to the next um, slide, please, Keisha. Right, so this is what, this, is, this has been through quite a few iterations. We have a couple of things, a couple of hurdles to get through yet with NZTA as we were the state highway through the northern area. They are keen to uh, bring the road intersection further down towards the Pereira. We're keen to keep as much development area on the southern of the, the northern side, the southern side of the road, to try and have a bit of a setback from the from the state highway noise, acoustics, that sort of thing. So we're just working through that. What we've got, sorry, what we've got here is. Um, so you see we've, um, we've been, in our language, proactive. We've pushed um, the potential stormwater detention pond into, this is where the council uh, reserve land boundary is, runs through here. So this piece of land, which is currently being farmed as part of the parent block, is actually in your ownership. What we would like to, to um, signal um, through the council law as a discussion is how we could encourage that to become an open uh, wetland recreation area where that would form a link in through into Queen's Park that would be part of stormwater management and we could utilise that sort of bit of landlocked land you can't get to at the moment. So we're, we're keen to flag that. We're keen to um, talk a little bit further about the Pereira stream. We worked very diligently over the last year, year and a half with the council staff. We've been great to deal with. They had some concerns about taking the actual ownership of the stream. So if we just flip back, just to confuse people, back to that other, stream, other slide, Keisha, and you'll see while... This piece of land has been sold off. This piece of land is still in private ownership, and this piece of land is in your ownership. Um, there was concern about maintenance issues and potential stream linkage issues at the time. So to get the subdivision through, we agreed that we would just cut the existing house off and keep that. Uh, the stream land itself is held, or it looks a bit odd, into the parent parcel. So that's all held in one title or be on two lots. We are keen to flag with um, you good people the opportunity to put that back into council. Uh, to us, it would, would make a lot of pragmatic sense. That would have a, a physical link. Um, council do own, with respect, the last, next couple of k's of the Pereira stream. So we would be quite keen to give you that road frontage back through into um, Katukatuka Road. So the big things we're keen to flag, I guess, understanding the vision the guys had, understanding um, we're keen to start some conversations about utilising part of the the, um, the, you can see through here this paddock area of land through here, kind of piece through there, and then look at how we can actually develop that as a, either a, a wetland, um, stormwater management area, recreation facility that would be linked on uh, by Katuka Road Extension Subdivision, and then what opportunity there is to talk to you, good people, about um, transferring the, um, the actual stream itself, which is currently uh, held in um, Shane and um, uh, Hamster's um, uh, titles. And I think, oops, my computer's just died on me. So I think that was the three key issues we're keen on our two minutes we had combined. So do you have any questions on that, people? Questions from the floor. I have one if there's any councillors. Um, questions from the floor. We'll start with Councillor Delgetti. Uh, so I didn't realise that council owned those sections adjacent to you. Are they... So they're currently leased out or what? The extensions? No, the ones no. where you're thinking about the wetland, they yes. sort of below SO 24745. Yes, that, that joins up with the paddock. That's in your ownership, that one. Yes. And then where, do, where does council start? Sorry, Just, please. That's all yours. Oh, yeah, right. Yep. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah. So is that leased out? What happens... No. So the, no, the old horses and stuff that were on there, the yeah, it's just part of the paddock. Yeah. yeah. But, but, okay. Yeah. So where those redwoods are, you'll see them become in Hunnable. That's the fence line, but it comes back probably ten metres from that fence line. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Councillor. Further questions, Councillor Moore. What size area are you? Is the subdivision? And you know, you've got twenty-five lots. Twenty thousand. Twenty. Just what size? Yes. What size? Will the houses? 
Not no, 600 no. average, 600 square yeah. metre average. Oh, decent size. So what, what, what um, um, Shane oh, and Hamish have really tried to focus on was big enough for mums and dads, uh, but not too big for retired farmers. So we've tried to find that balance. We've tried to have uh, the bigger sections um, on the state highway with a bit of buffer there. We've put some acoustic work through them planting, so they've still got a big building platform, and then still trying to keep as much linkage um, with the walkway and the prayer as we can, trying to avoid back sections, trying to get um, what we call connectivity and linkages so that you've got like a community in there. So a bit of design work's gone into that. Um, and then as we work, we work with the urban planners, you know, we stay away from back sections and that sort of thing, try and give each one a little more space. Thanks, okay. Councillor Duncan, you had a question? Yes, so um, the way we could assist potentially, um, you're looking at the three things that you brought up. So one of them is rezoning. So obviously at the moment that's zoned rural. Oh, no, no, sorry. Residential. It's residential. This is the last piece of... Um, you can't zone it's residential. It's already residential. Yes, yes. Right. Right. Hence, hence what, what um, Chan Harris give, uh, has given effect to, this is already zoned residential. So we're keen to facilitate that. We're, we're a little caught because it's an, an outreach, if you like. It's not physically contiguous with existing services or the walkway linkages. Right. So the combination of either going through Queen's Park or... Um, sorry, there was a fourth issue I had on my list, which was gone, was the, the service extensions. Now, at the moment, um, there's no, we understand there's no DCs required for RDC, which is good news. The bad news, of course, if we're wanting to get these services there, then it's up to the developers at the moment. So, uh, um, Shane and Hamish are looking at having to extend all the council mains through from where they're currently located, south of the um, uh, Peru Stream Bridge, and bring them through. Now, we understand there's a component to that, but what we would be keen to get on the council's radar is pedestrian linkages, road upgrades, that sort of thing. Um, that future linking, we can see how we can bring it in through Queen's Park, which we think would be quite cool. You get up in the morning, you walk through the park, kids off to school, cafes, be quite cool. Keep them off, um, even though it's a 50k road, the more pedestrian stuff we can keep through there, it would be great. Um, if we're unable to achieve that, then I'll be honest, cheekily, we would suggest to council, when are we looking for an upgrade of... Um, uh, um, kutuku, but we do understand there's a, uh, a few few rides you're looking at as well. But that's just, we're just mindful of, of our time. If I could just pose one one final question: um, What specifically is it you're asking of councils uh, or, or this council table to stage to to assist with? We do appreciate you bringing this to our table, but is there a, 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 is this just a notification exercise, or is there a specific, a specific request of council? Yeah, I think in, in, in fairness, in the ten minutes we've got, it was a specific just um, notification, notification exercise, um, and then it was to start that conversation. We didn't expect um, a formal. Yes, you can you can build our. No, no, no. Uh, um, we didn't expect. You're, you're going to get that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, having been on both sides, I did appreciate that. Um, it was really just to, to get the guys in the room, the people, um, the council staff have been very supportive and great to deal with. Um, what has come out of that is some. Um, I would say oddities with the previous stream, um, and and to facilitate what was just a cutting off an existing surplus farmhouse, we've had to bring that into the conversation now. Uh, working as uh, Shane said, well with uh, Nadi Hawiti and Nadi Apa in terms of the planting and the landscaping work, that's been great. Uh, Geo sourced seeds. Been working with Tiki Rob Martin from Nadi Hawiti sourcing seeds. So we were keen to look at how we might, um, and that's from our perspective a bit of a political decision. Is that really do the council? want to take the stream. Um, and we understand from a, a, a council office perspective, there's a, um, a maintenance issue there, um, but we would see some advantage from the community. So we thought, start the conversation with the good people. When I put that plan into council, which will be in before Christmas, uh, when we start those, those um, discussions, um, we can say, well, we've had a conversation with council. If there is any feedback on that, that would be great. Um, so in terms of your response to uh, Mr Chair, is that yeah, any feedback on the idea of uh, the stream vesting, walkway linkages through, because we know that without getting on the LTP, it's not going to happen. So the council staff can do the best they can, but unless you good people say, look, we're going to fund the walkway, we're going to fund the bridge across uh, the Pereira, then it's not going to happen. So yeah. hence certainly, we'll... yeah, certainly understand you bringing it to our attention this time with our upcoming LTP mm. discussion, so I can certainly understand it. It's exciting to... Uh, to see further uh, growth and development mm. being planned mm. in, in our district. Um, it's often we said it all happens in the southern part of the district, but it's nice to see it up your way as well. So um, thank you for coming and presenting. Thank you for uh, bringing it to our attention.
Um, we look forward to uh, further discussions with you and uh, some positive outcomes in the future with this exciting development. So, thanks for being along. Copies um, with Keisha, so there's hard copies of there for you to take away and have a browse. Any questions? I'll leave some contact details as well. But I yeah, obviously expect there'll be questions on it you know, tomorrow or something. You think something more than happy. Right. Right. Thank you. Really Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. So, moving on with the uh, with the agenda, uh, item number four on the agenda: uh, conflict of interest. Uh, all members are well aware of their obligations around conflict of interest. If you've got one to declare, please declare it now. If not, or if you feel you have one uh, later on in the agenda, please uh, please raise it and bring it to the attention of the chair. As mentioned earlier, item number five: uh, uh, confirmation of order of business. There will be a change to that business. We will work with it. As we uh, as we go along, in the absence of uh, his wish at the mayor and CE uh, Beggs, who have been held up uh, at a prior meeting, but um, hopefully when they come back into the room, we'll be able to take uh, the mayor's report and the CE's report uh, at a later stage. So moving on now to confirmation of order of um, sorry confirmation of minutes. So I am referring to. So, referring to uh, confirmation of order of minutes, page five, six, seven, eight, nine, page ten, eleven, twelve. Page 13 and page 14 and 15. No matters arising or clarification sought to that. If none, do I have a move that they be a true and correct record? Move Councillor Morn, seconded. Councillor Galgetti. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. Item number seven on today's agenda, follow-up actions from previous meetings. Uh, as per normal, we will scroll through those very quickly. A number of them, you'll note, have been completed. Um, so there are a number there. Item one, item two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Uh, sorry, eighteen. Item 18, yes, Councillor Duncan. Uh, Mr. Beats will confirm the status of the agreement. I'm assuming we can we will that come at a later date? Um, perhaps that's a question that um, you may be able to forward to um, CE Biggs when he's in here as part of his reports when hopefully he gets back today. Item 18. Item 19. Sorry. The status is. Um, oh, sorry, it has been it's so. Not expected until mid twenty. Okay, does that um, satisfy you, Councillor? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> sorry, I could have read that. Item 20, 21, 22, 23. Councillor Duncan. One more, sorry. Yes, no um, problem. I do not understand number twenty-three. I, I I did at the time. Can can we have some clarification? What a license to occupy for the unformed road. What does that mean? And um, I was just going to say, I think it's probably um, worthy of a further explanation actually in the action items, given the longevity of this one. It's been sitting around for a while now. I know it's on um, Graham Poynton's work plan and he does keep following it up, but I'll get him to put some more context around it um, for the next update if that's right. Thank you. 
It's up in your patch are you aware of yeah, the piece of dirt? I know where it is, but I yeah. just don't understand the implications yeah. of, of that, what's on there. Yeah. And you're right, it is something that's been bouncing around a wee while looking for <coughs> some yeah. sort of a resolution. It doesn't um, hold a great deal of significance to Council right. itself, um, but it is just one of those little tied out matters that um, getting all the parties together to uh, to get that more formalised is, yeah. uh, is what the hold up there is, I think. If there are no further questions, that could I have somebody move that the follow-up actions uh, from previous meeting be received? Councillor Duncan, seconded Councillor Carter. All those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Okay, so the next item is, is eight and nine are both the news report and the chief executive report. Uh, which we will shift in the agenda to later in the agenda when uh, both of those two people are on, on, on site in that meeting. So moving straight to item number 10, reports for decisions. Thank you, councillors. So, um, between myself and Katrina, we'll cover off the code of conduct and the standing orders. So, um, while we are relatively um, au fait with both of these documents, then if there are some questions that we can't answer on the spot, we will come back to you with those responses. Um, so, first of all, Council um, is required to adopt both of these documents um, as soon as possible after a Council, after the elections. So, um, I'll in turn take you first through the Code of Conduct and just give a couple of clarifications to this report. Um, so, this Code of Conduct will apply to all elected members as well as members of the community boards. So, it's just important for those um, members to know that and we will be giving them the same report at their first meetings. Um, the, there are a number of areas within the Code of Conduct that we provide clarity on. A lot of this is legislative driven um, or best practice from Local Government New Zealand. So we tend to try and work on their models for both these documents to um, make sure there's consistency. Um, I don't think there's too many, well, what we had in the past were two documents, we used to have what was called a governance handbook and some of the previous councillors may remember that, and also a code of conduct and what we've tried to do is actually mould them into one document so that it's easy for you to follow about what applies to um, which areas. There's a paper further on um, for your information which I'll speak to which is the pecuniary interest one. And that's a change in legislation, so that's also been brought into this code of conduct um, document. And I'm happy to leave it there, and maybe we just have any questions on yep. the code of conduct one first. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Carol. So this is a document that you would have all seen that's been circulated in your agendas for for reading. Um, quite detailed documents, so I'm assuming that uh, all members would have uh, would have read them and studied it. Uh, question, Councillor Moore. Um, well, just on the code of conduct, I wonder whether we should add in the dress code, because we just discussed that at our meeting, and uh, our team building meeting. Yes. And just as a new count, you know, when you come into it, as a new councillor, understanding, I know it could change every three years or whatever. But yeah, just not a biggie, but wonder whether it's worth it having that dress code um, in our code of conduct. Just, Carol, is that something that you feel is appropriate to have in this document or is it something that we just re review at the beginning of each triennium or do you think it needs to be in the code of conduct as a as a stated, stated line? I'm, I'm very happy to include it so that it gives guidance to elected members. So I've got okay. no problem adding it's that not in. It's not an onerous task to no. do to have that included giving, uh, um, giving over the second recommendation? So I think what we would say is that Council um, adopt, amends the version to include, and if yep. there's anything else that you want included, we'll just include it in that second recommendation. Any further questions regarding this uh, item? 
Councillor Duncan. Um, page 50, at the bottom of page 50, we discuss, uh, so that's 3.5.6, option A, limits the ability, etc. and talks about option B. I think option A is in the document further down, yes. but we haven't actually cited option B. I wondered if it was worthwhile having that as an option for councillors to look at as part of the decision making, or whether we've already decided that we're going with option A. So you've jumped to standing orders. <laughs> oh, <pardon>. yes. So <laughs> Katrina can cover that in the next section, is that right? We'll just Thank get you. the code of conduct sorted first. Pardon. No yep. problem. You can, um, <laughs> as per standing orders, you can foreshadow that question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor uh, Lambert, questions? Oh, I'm just going through, I couldn't see anything. Is there anything you think we should be considering? At all, or you're quite happy. I mean, I was quite happy with it. But. Yes, and um, obviously we reviewed this with the mayor before um, putting it in the council agenda, and he was very comfortable. He, he had a couple of suggestions, very minor ones, when we were collating the report, um, and so there was nothing of any um, issue to him okay. either. Just from from my point of view, um, having had a couple of terms on, on council, there's no significant changes or no changes that I could overly detect that are different than the way uh, the council's operated for the last six years with regards to its, um, its code of conduct. Um, so I didn't see anything there that was uh, of any great concern, if that helps yeah. with your, uh, your question, Councillor Yeah, no, I just, just, yeah, it, it, it read very well, I thought. I hope I haven't missed something. I'd like to move from the Chair that, first of all, we receive the report. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Carter. And we do have recommendation two there, which was add, if we could just add that in so that uh, um, we are all aware of what the recommendation is. Okay, and I'll just read that out, particularly for those that are online. Recommendation two now reads that council amend uh, to include the dress code in the code of conduct. Code of conduct. Can I just ask a clarification? So, with that addition, are you happy to adopt it now, or do you want me to bring it back again? I'd be comfortable to adopt if, if that's the feeling of the yeah. room, unless anybody has uh, any strong voice against. So, if you put it down to adopt with amendment. Yeah. As long as it includes what we discussed at our team meeting. I'll make sure. <laughs> Okay, so we have the recommendation there as, as worded. Do we have a mover for that recommendation? Move Councillor Carter, seconded Councillor Vaughan. So now with the recommendation on the table, speakers for, speakers against? No right or reply, Councillor. With that, uh, we'll put the, uh, put the motion as it stands. All those in favour, say aye. Aye. Against? Motion is carried. Sure. Yes. Yes. I think it was unanimous, wasn't it? It was unanimous. Yes, it was. There was no uh, no no recorded against. Uh, and uh, if so, I would have asked someone to have that recorded. It's just that we do need 75%. 75%, right? so, yeah, so no, unanimous could be recorded on that one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, next thing we dash for standing orders, and we'll pass to Katrina to uh, go through this and review that with us. Oh. So... Um, thank you. Good afternoon, councillors. Um, so standing orders are effectively the rules that govern how council meetings um, are conducted. Uh, the purpose really is around decision making and, and supporting decision making that's transparent, inclusive, lawful. Uh, we are planning on running training with elected members early next year to go into more detail around the standing orders. You will see your agenda is quite lengthy because the standing orders themselves are quite lengthy. Um, what we've done, so the standing orders were last reviewed in 2019 after that election, we've gone through and reviewed them again. Um, we've compared them against new guidance that's come out from LGNZ. They effectively come out with templates um, for us to reference from. And you'll see in section 3.3 of the report, um, we've made a number of amendments, and the most significant amendments are specified in that section. So um, updates to align with the LGNZ um, changes, there's been things such as new definitions added in, um, and mostly minor things like that. Um, increasing the time limit for public forum um, to align with what we generally have always done as, as general practice. 
Um, amendments to reflect that minutes are not required to be kept in hard copy format and there's no requirement to have them signed by the chairperson. Um, incorporation into amendments for Appendix 9 around workshops um, and our new approach for running those workshops and deleting Appendix 12, um, record keeping for the council. It wasn't really a necessary section at all. Um, I will run you through the four areas where Council can decide a preferred approach um, that I've identified in Section 3.5 of the report. The first one is the right to attend by audio or audiovisual link. Currently, the previous Council um, had permitted members to attend meetings via audio or audiovisual link. Um, one of the things there is that where people attend by audio or audiovisual link, they can't count as a quorum, but they can vote. Um, it's a bit of an anomaly that we know the mayor is following up with. Yeah. Um, so just sorry, can I just make a point? We um, we did seek more clarification on this one because you know it doesn't seem to make sense if you're not part of the quorum that you have a vote. But that is correct what we're saying but I know the mayor in particular feels it's an anomaly and he's raised it with National Council to say well perhaps we could have some consistency. It was not what we thought when the um, COVID rules changed. We thought that they'd remove the right for someone online to actually vote but that's not the case so we, we're clarifying that with you now. Um, the second area is mayors and chairs with a casting vote. So our current standing orders provide for the mayor or chairperson um, to have in the event of a 50-50 split, the, the casting vote. Uh, the third one is speaking and moving options. Um, so there's three different frameworks, um, option A, option B, option C. Option A is the most stringent, option C is the least stringent. Um, thank you for your earlier question, Councillor Duncan, because it's allowed me time to go and double check where in the standing orders we find that. Um, so if you have a look at page 129 of the your agenda, it goes through the differences between those three different options. Um, effectively, option A, um, it's, it's, it's all about amendments effectively, a lot of it. So under option A, members who have moved and seconded a motion cannot then move and second an amendment. Um, to the same motion and only members who have not spoken to that motion may move or second an amendment. Um, option B limits um, the ability of movers and seconders to move amendments, um, but it allows any other member, regardless of whether they've spoken to the motion, to move an amendment. Um, and option C is the least formal, um, so it removes any kind of, of those limitations on moving amendments. Um, so currently, where our current standing orders adopt option A. Um, and then the fourth, fourth area is time limit needed for staff to prepare advice. So this is really around deputations, um, where um, members of the community come and engage with council and we need to provide staff advice on that. Um, the current standing orders retain the five day default on that. Um, so while the current standing orders have made those decisions, you're, it's within your remit today to um, change those. And, um, but we have provided a recommendation reconfirming that you're also able to make amendments and make different decisions when you're adopting them this time. Mm -hmm. Happy to answer any questions. Yeah, questions from the floor. Councillor Moore. Uh, just why on recommendation C, why go for option A? Because I'd actually prefer option C, but <laughs> be a little bit less. Um, formal because I've sat in a couple of these meetings and the amendment process uh, seems to be very technical where I feel it would be easier and a bit less informal that anybody could make an amendment because more heads around the table can actually get the wording a lot better. I'll, I'll speak to if I, if I may pull me up if I'm wrong, Katrina, feel free to. Um, it's my belief that there should be a formal structure around Full meeting procedure. Oh, sorry, so that is still is a formal structure. Yes, option C. But I think when you when you look at um, moving amendments, um, they can be they can be used to stall process 
quite strongly if somebody knows how to move the amendments quickly by enabling a someone who's already uh, moved a motion um, to then be able to, to move an amendment to a motion and, and, and speak to it. it. It can get very, very complex if you don't have some strict rules in place to 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 control that formal motion process. That's that's just my take on it. Um, I don't know what other councillors may, may think about that. Again, that's just my my take on it. Can be it can, it can just keep rolling. Yeah. It can keep rolling and rolling and rolling in a in a meeting format, and can the same subject matter can be can be regurgitated time and time again in a slightly different format, um, unless it's being fairly well controlled from the from the chair. Well, Councillor Loudon, thoughts? Um, I tend to favour option C, um, and um, to my mind, it gives a little bit more debate around the table and gives more opportunity for people to have a say and um, then others to consider what that person said. Um, a more strict option A um, really limits debate. Just, um, I'm just having some technical difficulties on the computers. So. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to take a paper copy to see um, what page was that on point? 129. Sorry? 129. 129. Sorry. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what the Mm. Yep. I think um, just uh, just some advice there from um, uh, from staff regarding the subject, and I think it's one that we should get right, mm -hmm. and I think it's one that we should get um, a good degree of clarity around the around the table, and uh, without um, uh, his worship the mayor Andy being here today and and the uh, the CE, I wonder if this should be allowed to uh, just to, to, to sit. Do, are we, do we have any reasons why we need to move this receipt of this document? Or this, could we give it the rest of it, but just with, and hold back on on that um, recommendation C? I think what, um, I mean, we can leave the whole item until the mayor returns, or we can go through um, any of the other recommendations okay. that you want. Yeah. Okay, in the uh, in the interests of um, of time in the meeting and and being unsure as to when the the, the mayor and the CEO arrives, um, let's have a look at the recommendation as it as it stands. So we've had a receipt of the uh, the report. So let's have a look at the recommendations that they are. Recommendation uh, A there that council adopts and is reconfirming that standing orders allow members to join by audio and visual link. Are we all in favour of yep. that? We have a mover of that in Councillor Lambert. Do we have a seconder there, Councillor Morn? And we're all in favour of that. Yep. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Against. Option A is carried. Let's look at option B. That the chair be given the option of a casting vote. Do we have a move for that? Moving that from, as, as worded, Councillor uh, Delgetti. Seconder, Councillor Lambert. All those in favour? Aye. 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 That, that uh, is carried. Option C will let lie just for the time being. Does that need to be noted there somewhere um, no. that we're holding off on that one? When we do the minutes, we'll just note that that one was discussed when the mayor returns. Okay. Yeah. We'll um, we'll come we'll come back to that one. I think is the best bet, um, councillors, and Councillor D, um, Councillor D, <laughs> <laughs> recommendation D. Uh, that time needed for staff to prepare advice remains in default of five days. Moving for that, Councillor Loudon, seconder, Councillor Morn. All those in favour of that? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay, we will carry that to that um, to that point, noting that they were all at 75% uh, as the amount required right. as a unanimous uh, unanimous yes. vote. Yes. So going back to all of those things as above, um, can they be within the meeting um, changed by the um, by the chair? 
Can they be changed? Like, for instance, if, if we were in a meeting and we were... Um, no, sorry, I, I actually think I'm referring to the one that we're not talking about. So we'll, I'll come back, I'll bring that back to the West Yeah. Okay. Um, we back. welcome uh, our CE, Peter Biggs, to the room. Uh, Mr Biggs, do you want to take a couple of moments to update on where we're, where we're at? Or yep. what's your first thing? We obviously have deferred the uh, mirror report and, and your report. Uh, we've just gone through the standing orders there. Uh, the only one that has not been carried, the following, the, uh, the balance we all carried unanimously is uh, option C, uh, which was waived for further discussion with the, uh, with the Mayor on that there. So that's what we've just got to at this stage. So an update would be um, uh, for you to please, on behalf of the Mayor, to continue chairing this meeting. Um, the Mayor will, will be probably another hour away, and the Mayor has in, invited me to... Uh, to offer the mayoral report simply be taken as read. Yes, sir. Um, my my thoughts on that one would, would lead to well. my section. Okay. Uh, those work unanimous, those items. You've only just made 75% since with three people missing out of the room. No, unanimous voting of the people that were in the room eligible to vote at the time. I think you look at the total people in the committee on 12. Uh, no, it's the people that are in the room that have the right to vote at the time, i.e. come back to the earlier conversation uh, when we discussed that um, councillors that are online um, didn't form part of your quorum. We have a quorum, so it is a uh, majority of the quorum at the time that's voting is my understanding. Yep. It's my understanding of, uh, of the approval of those. So who's online is not part of the quorum? Yes, yes. Uh, he's not part of the quorum, but he can vote. But he can vote. He's nine to do the mic 75%. No, no, it's, the, it's the people in the room at the time. The attendees of the room at the time. Sorry, but they're not attending in the room at the time. I believe that we have that. We have that action correct. Could I see clarification on that? If that's a point of order that you're raising, councillor, mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. questioning it. It's only five percent. Those attending. We'll find it. We'll find we'll it in the standing orders. We will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll 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 uh, I'll take that uh, on on board, and we'll just leave that for some second, a little bit more clarification on that one. In my understanding of all is that seventy five percent of those that are attending the meeting at the time, um, uh, yes. and above. Okay. Can I just offer the clarification? The adoption of standing orders and any amendment to standing orders must be made by council and by a vote of not less than 75% of the members present. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Councillor Carter, are you happy with that thank explanation? You. Thank you. Thank you for raising it. Um, so we now refer back to item eight. item eight. For those online, uh, we are referring back to item eight, which is the Mayor's report. Um, uh, Mr Biggs, would you like to um, relay that your earlier comment um, and that the mayor wishes for you to present it uh, as read. Um, uh, right. Thank you. Thanks, okay, so page 19, uh, looking at the mayor's report, uh, it appears that the mayor is going to be held up uh, quite likely for the balance of the day. Uh, at, least, at least another hour. At least another hour, so um, that's just come to our attention. So with regards to the mayor's report, um, I'd like to move that we take the mayor's report as read, it has been circulated. It is in the hands of all councillors. Do I have a seconder for that recommendation? Second, Councillor Carter. All those in favour of that recommendation that we accept and take the Mayor's report as read? Aye. Right. All those in favour? Thank you. Against? <coughs> Carried. Uh, the second re recommendation, item number two, that the email from Mario to Couch received 5th of November 2022 regarding the adoption of the Murray Wards be received. You've all seen a copy of that. Mm -hmm. It has been circulated. We're happy to uh, take that recommendation that it be received. Moved Councillor Duncan, seconded Councillor Lambert. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against. That recommendation is also carried. So what happens to that recommendation now? That gets a response, obviously. Just noting it as being received to uh, as it was addressed to all councillors. Uh, 
uh, item nine on the uh, on the agenda, Chief Executive's report. Um, if I may, Mr. Chair, just regarding the questions that are asked in the email, do you intend to take them as a Lagoima request for information? Um, what, what uh, the complainant has said is that she has sent this complaint to the Electoral Commission as well. Um, and when this appeared on my desk, I thought it was more appropriate that um, a response be provided by the Mayor. So I would have anticipated that I will work with the Mayor to provide our own response. Um, given this, this is in legislation, we will make that point, and I'm sure the Electoral Commission will as well but take on board um, her comments and also make some statement around the process with making Maori wards, establishing Maori wards. Yeah, also, also I don't think it was going on to the Member of Parliament as well, was it not? Would you think, I'm sorry to ask yeah, this question. No problem, let's, um, get it, let's get it right. Would you think a recommendation that says Council notes that um, that staff will work with the Mayor to provide a response? Yeah, well, we can put it in the action items, whichever way you want. I just don't feel comfortable saying we received it and yeah. not know what's going to happen with it after that. Um, the reason that I reason I made that um, that comment is because I didn't, when reading the letter, I didn't think there was a require mm. a clear request of action on behalf of council that I could see. But Get a letter, you respond to it. I would have thought. Mm. So you're seeking, you're just seeking a response and acknowledgement yeah. of that letter. Yeah. Has, that, has, that, has that happened? Yeah. Uh, certainly, a, um, a acknowledgement has been sent. Yes. Oh, that's we work on a response is that isn't it so yeah. so we'll take uh, so we'll take an action so we'll go into the actions register that staff will work with his worship to provide an appropriate response to the to the complaint is that okay thank you okay you, yeah i'm happy with that if you're happy with that yep. um as a as an action yes thank you thank you council Now move to item number nine on the agenda, which is the Chief Executive's report. Um, just again, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, page. Um, can, can I just Six. provide a further um, update on the last item? <laughs> Sorry, there was a further update on the last item. So thanks to the um, wonders of technology, who, this person who's listening in has actually just forwarded me the response that the Mayor has already sent to Ms. Um, Couch. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I'm pleased to announce that that uh, action has been completed. Oh, that was so efficient. <laughs> My staff, Councillor. <laughs> Thank you, but, but again, a good a good point tonight, though, um, Councillor Moore, that um, yeah, you should always be responding, and they should they should be in appropriate fashion. So yes. thank you for thank you for raising. Councillor, um, can you make that response available to us? I'll, I'll check with his worship that he's happy. I, I haven't read the detail of it. But thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, so no further questions on that item. Uh, we'll move forward on the agenda to uh, Chief Executive's report. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I will start with uh, Section 3 um, as a question to you. Uh, it's been presented to Risk and Assurance, but if anyone would like to discuss further the health, safety and wellbeing update. I'd like to take it as read. Um, there being none, um, the engagement and consultation schedule, Carol, would you? Uh, no further updates than what's actually outlined in that. Pause there. I, I note, Sharon, that you were um, about to, to uh, ready yourself for answering questions, but questions. yeah, was there something that you really wanted to present to elected members? No, it was something there should have there have been any questions. Okay. okay. The point five, the parks and open spaces strategy update. Um, take that as read. Uh, what's really um, helpful for me is that you'll, you'll be aware that we've had a parks and open spaces strategy under development for some time. Um, that's involved uh, us working with a consultant to work with community groups about what would be a recommended strategy for our district. Um, where we're at with that is a, we're in almost in draft form. 
um, would like to bring that to you in the new year and request for a subcommittee of council to be formed to help us move from draft to a final strategy, um, which obviously would be agreed under, under full council. Um, Katrina, have I got that about right in terms of your proposal? Um, so that's kind of what's next in that space. But what had happened is we've got a number of community proposed initiatives, some of which I've listed there, which have also come with community funding. And thus far we've um, paused those initiatives whilst we were checking that the development of the strategy didn't contradict those uh, initiatives. Um, myself and some of the senior staff have worked with the developers of the strategy uh, and some of the community interest groups um, and found that there is no contradiction and we should continue. Um, so I'm very delighted um, under Adina's leadership, she has one of her project managers now appointed uh, and that project manager is working with some of Gaylene's team, Joe in the room and Jaime, et cetera, to work with um, those community interest groups to we can now develop the initiatives with the external funding uh, and bring that to you um, for, for future attention. Why we still need to bring it to you is that whilst the uh, some of the initiatives, and I'll, I'll give you an example, one of them is <coughs> the State Martin Velodrome from the Martin Development Group. They have an external provider who's willing to fund um, the resurfacing of the velodrome. But of course, there's a consequence on council, if, or if there is a consequence on council of depreciating <coughs> an asset or maintaining an asset, and that's a rateable that you know that has to come from our services, and I would need to put that in front of you for your consideration. Um, so we're just going through that assessment now, but at the same time working with these groups, and I think uh, I would anticipate I haven't been part of the conversation. That there's a lot of joy in those groups, so we're prepared to move forward because um, we have delayed them in some cases many many months. Yeah, Katrina, would there be anything else you'd add to that, or or, or Gaylene? Great. Joe, you're happy as well, I presume. Thank you. Uh, yeah, questions there? Sorry, uh, Councillor Duncan. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm very excited about this development. Thank you very much, staff. I'm sure that there's quite a body of work that's had to go, go into this. Um, I, it occurred to me in 5.3 the internal project team to coordinate the projects and to work with each of the relevant community groups. Um, I wondered if councillors, you know, relevant councillors should be informed of who those people are so that if community come to us for questions, we can refer them to the right staff? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, it would be... Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, <coughs> it would be our intention to keep, um, uh, keep you updated by council meetings. But um, uh, and via the PMI report would be the, the sort of way we'd, we'd um, so that would be a monthly update to you. But I mean, by all means, as a, you know, a representative of the local constituents would would want to keep you informed as well. So yes. if we'd add that, um, Dean's online. Sorry. And with the discussion with staff, if they're okay for us to refer the public to them for inquiries and what have you, or how that would happen, because people will come to their councillor. And then rather than us going, um, trying to solve problems, or we can say, well, you need to bring this staff member. Um, yes, it's, is this for new initiatives that we no, have? No, it's existing. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking specifically for the, the Taiga Playground. Yeah, so, um, so our project manager will, will be working with the, um, the representatives of, the, of that group. Yes. Um, I mean, it's imminent. If I can see Adina has come online, perhaps I could offer the floor to her if that's okay. Yeah, she will have the relevant answers, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was just wondering if maybe the best way to um, give an idea to the councillors might be if we have an overview of all these projects and we can sort of supply that to everyone as part of our PMR report and sort of the status of each of the projects and who we're working with. And then it's really clear, I think, for everyone. Uh, further to my question I emailed through is, um, I think probably Gailene might be able to answer, but yeah, around, um, I'm just, especially in relation to uh, recent news, I'm, I'm really pro, want to be proactive around enabling 
um, all our community to have swimming lessons, know how to swim. And I'm just wanting to clarify that um, it was my belief that it was something we were previously able to help with. And I know the, the funder has changed in name. Has, has our offering got any less or... Um, uh, so are we only helping with the transport? Sorry, I'm not framing this question very well. Are we only helping with the transport to get them to the swimming lessons? Do we help with the actual swimming lessons themselves? Okay, so quite some time ago, um, Council resolved that we would have free entry for preschoolers mm -hmm. plus a caregiver and all school age children that attended swim lessons. So that has continued through. Um, previously, the previous contractor worked with a local business um, and sought sponsorship. So that hasn't continued with the change of um, contractor. Um, and then the third thing is we also got the funding that you mentioned for um, transportation, like schools to get their children there, and that's continued. There is the change of funder, but this year we had carried funds over because previous season um, we didn't have that full season with the COVID restrictions. So we've carried the Kiwi Sport money over and moving forward we will still seek funding. So we've lost some private funding. The uh, contractor, that was directly uh, to the contractor, not right. to council. And so are the children, um, are they missing out in any way compared to what they were? From what council has supplied, we haven't. Um, I'm not sure if the, the new contractor will um, look for sponsorship um, and maybe able to offer alternative things but they've definitely got, still got free entry for the swim lessons. There we go, yeah. No further questions on that point that's just been raised? Over to you, sir, to Thank you. Your um, report. Point six is the update from um, the Three Waters NTU, oh, sorry, the National Transition Unit. Um, 6.1 in the attachment is an update from the National Transition Unit regarding Three Waters reform, particularly regarding uh, the feedback that had been given by the 80,000 submissions to, to the select committee. Um, that um, bill has now gone through its second reading in the House last week. Um, you'll see from the attachment um, where the NTU believe the bill has been strengthened. Um, I, I, I've read through what probably you've read through, I haven't read the full, uh, full submission uh, to the select committee um, in the hundreds of pages it, it, it is. Um, and uh, Council are continuing to work with the transition unit. We've received funding to support that, but we are receiving a considerable number of uh, official or Lagoima requests relating to how much council is spending on, on uh, the transition. Um, but I can report that the transition costs that we are incurring are funded by that 353,000 mentioned in the 6.3. Um, that's not to say it's an easy task. Um, we are mostly doing this in house and backfilling where we can. Uh, the ongoing absence of our Chief Operating Officer is causing challenge, um, but we're working collaboratively with the NTU uh, and with the Dina's team and others in my team um, to, to, to provide the information requested. Um, point seven, um, you will see in the attachment six, the letter from the Ministry of Health. Um, the background in that is they have formally asked council what would it cost and how long would it take for us to fluoridate our major water supplies in Hunterville Pools and Taihabi. Um, we'd given them an indicative and now they've asked us to come back to confirm. Um, my interpretation of that would be they would intend to ask us in the future to fluoridate our water. To fluoridate the right word. Yeah. Um, uh, but they would fund that. So this is not something that council I'm yet to determine what operational costs it might incur ongoing. 
um, beyond what we currently do. Just, uh, I may have a um, question to, just referring to a comment you just made. You, yeah. We've sent through um, some, some indicative figures which are in the report yes. and, and, and noting the earlier um, pressure that um, Council's on with um, in the absence of a, of a senior member of staff. Yes. Um, does indicative lead us to a position where we might be caught short? With particular, I'm just worried about what ongoing costs might look like. Yes, so um, we've been, the attachment you see is a request for us to firm up our pricing, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and that's in the hands of Adina's team, uh, and I got an update yesterday to say that that's in hand and will be um, delivered, the, the not requested a response until February. So on, ongoing um, costs uh, would be, after initial setup, should this proceed, ongoing costs would be a council cost, is that correct? Am I right reading that or not? Um, my interpretation is that, but I haven't confirmed that. Okay, um, and I, because I don't know if adding fluoride to the water actually means we add less of something else, so it's a neutral cost. Yeah. So I, I don't know the answer to that yet. Right, thank you. Councillor Moore. Uh, just on the fluoridization. Fluoridization. Um, is that under a three waters cost if, it, if the facility went to the three waters body? Uh, or is that a, if, a health? well-being cost no, no. so it would be a requirement from the ministry of health for us to have that yeah. uh, as a community and that requirement would translate to uh, the entity which would take on potentially take on our, uh, our water services on 1 july 2024 yes no further questions on that one um, item eight of your report um I previously, uh, at the end of the last training, revised our capital budget um, based on doability factor. Um, that paper uh, did not include roading uh, deviations. Um, we had intended to submit that to you for this meeting. Um, I would hope um, with, the, with uh, as, as, I, as, you, uh, um, as I look mentioned earlier the absence of our chief operating officer is causing distress not distress but uh, challenges in certain areas and this is one of them um, we would hope to have that to you in December bear in mind this doesn't change our budget our, our budget is what we said in the annual plan and the long-term plan this it gives you a sense of what we can likely achieve by year end given the constraints we have um, elected members regional forum is, is 23rd of February um, his worship I'm sure will encourage you to attend that uh, it is held at Tomato Pihi, um this year which uh, certainly it gets around the district and it's a real pleasure to host uh, we take our turn and uh, and to have a facility such as Tomato Pihi to host is it's really special for us uh, I'll take it item 10 is read um, and leave the recommendation for you Mr Chair Thank you. Well, uh, I'll move from the Chair that uh, the Chief Executive's report be received. Do we have a second for that? Councillor Dalkuti, thank you. Are there any further questions uh, of the report that we may have noted during during reading? Being, uh, being none, just on behalf of the committee, um, we acknowledge the, um, uh, the absence of a senior staff member um, and the fact that that does cause you, um, you know, a, a staffing shortage and some and some jigging around that you're doing so we acknowledge that and um, trust that you can uh, handle it the best you can and reach out to us if there's anything that we can do um, to offer any assistance but we are aware that that's causing you some um, some, some management problems. I, thank you Mr service. Chair if, if I may um, um, uh, be able to respond to that I'm delighted with my staff I've, I've got some young staff one of them online at the moment who's stepped up incredibly well uh, to, to, to fill the void um, and it's a pleasure to work for an organisation that um, acknowledges um, the absence of that individual and rallies around them both to support him as an individual uh, and his family and staff around him. Uh, it's really, really impressive. Please be here. Please be here. Thank you. Um, moving on, the... Sorry, Jill. Comment? Just one thing. Going back to 10, external submissions, we've um, I know I've been a part of two of those that have now been lodged. The um, uh, 10.2 and 10.3. Um, I wondered, 
being part of that and helping to feed into it, it then didn't come back to me as the actual submission that was about to be put, that was submitted. And I wondered, did it do all, as it comes on behalf, as it goes in on behalf of RDC, do, does everyone see that before it gets lodged? Or was there an agreement by us that it would be lodged and therefore it would well, be just uh, been through? Seek some clarity there from staff on that one. Um, thank you, through you, um, Mr Chair. So those two were delegated to that subcommittee. Um, so those ones didn't come back on behalf of full council because of that delegation. Um, generally, the others would get sent to full council. So an example was a submission that um, we put into Horizons Regional Council um, proposed change three that got sent to full council for review. Um, so that was a little bit of the differentiation there. And yeah, just... Um Picking up on that, yeah, that was, as you recall, Councillor Duck, I'm sure, was an active decision by Council to sub, um, subcommittee those um, those reviews of policies um, back out to members, uh, often with a particular interest in that in that space, to um, help with the su uh, submission by staff on behalf of the party. So. Thank you. That was the reminder I needed. Yeah, thank you. I just one, uh, one further comment, or just um, that on our website, all those submissions are on there in one place if you do want to see them just under submissions made to other organisations so they're a complete package of what goes. Excellent, thank you. Um, just the next item here uh, as part of your report there's the health and safety which I know we, we had. Did, did you feel there was something more that you wanted to go into as you just entered the room at that stage? Um, Chief Executive, was there, was there more that you wanted to investigate in that? Or? Uh, no, because it's already been to risk and assurance, yep. uh, I, I didn't think there needed to be, but okay. I just noted that Sharon um, was ready to pounce, you might say, right. uh, to answer any questions, and I just wanted to make okay. sure that she wasn't having something that she really wanted to bring to the attention of the full council. Okay. Uh, she's confirmed there isn't, so we'll take it as read. Okay, thank you. Happy with that. So we're just catching up on where we're up to now. Sorry. Sorry. Getting back online. Okay, so once again, we are just um, jumping around a little bit on the uh, on, on today's uh, order paper with regards to order of business. Next item on the agenda is uh, 10.2, confirmation of committee structure and membership. Two things about that. Um, I'm happy to delay that to further in, um, hopefully for the... Uh, for the, for the mayor uh, to be here to have that discussion, as that's a space that he very much works in. Um, is there any reason why this, if, should this need to be delayed from this meeting, does that cause any greater problems or do we need to have something structured yeah. further into that? Sorry, it would cause us issues if we couldn't yeah. get it at this meeting. Okay, um, I, I can can say that I have had a discussion with oh, the mayor okay. about, about these. Um, and the general feeling was that we would leave it open to the uh, to the members that were here so to express to express sessions. Like so let's let's work through it uh, and see if we can get some resolution on some of these uh, some of these items, uh, and we'll defer those that we need to. If, if in fact we should do, is the is the committee and members happy to uh, to push yep. on with item ten point two on that on that respect? Yep. Okay. So we'll start with recommendation one that uh, confirmation of the committee structure. Members should be received. I'll move from the chair. Second, Councillor Lambert. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's carried. Um, recommendation number two. Uh, many of you that are sitting around the table here were, out, were at our assurance and uh, risk uh, meeting earlier in and had the privilege of uh, meeting Mr Philip Jones and also working in his... Uh, Finance 101 workshop, which uh, I think we're all agreeing was, was very good. So a discussion has been had, and there is a recommendation at, uh, recommendation two that Mr Philip Jones be confirmed as the Indian Independent Chair of the Risk and Assurance Committee. Do we have a mover for that? Mm -hmm. Councillor Dalgetty, and seconded from Councillor Simon Loudon. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Thank you. Uh, recommendation three, uh, which as states in the order paper, uh, that the salary for the Indian Pair Independent Chair uh, of the Risk and Assurance Committee be capped at an annual salary of $15,000. Is there any discussion around that? If there is none, do I have a mover for that? 
I was just going to ask, is that how do we arrive at that figure? Is that um, Mate, um, councillor? So, um, so question from councillor Lambert on that. Yes. So when I went over this paper with his worship, um, the previous um, fee for the independent chair was ten thousand, and his worship felt that um, it should be increased to fifteen. It is a field that we, um, I certainly know that, I think that many of the councillors share the same view, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's very, very important that we do have an independent person sitting in that space and that person needs to have the calibre uh, given um, what that role is. Councillor uh, Dalgetty. Um, I'm very happy with this, this salary. I'm just interested, uh, do we pay his travel costs on top of that? With your indulgence, yep. the um, Chief Financial Officer just asked if we could change it to annual fee rather, annual than, fee. rather than a salary section. Okay, so let's um, start by, uh, with, with a change to annual fee rather than annual salary, would somebody be happy to move that recommendation? We have a move from Councillor Dalgetty, we have a seconder from Councillor, we'll take Councillor Wong, welcome to the table. Your name's on the records now. So, with the amendment to that, do we have any further discussion? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion is carried. Now, recommendation four is where we'll need to work with you all here or weave it. Um, assets uh, following committee structure membership be confirmed. Um, we do not make... have who that's going to be. No, yet, so, do we? so if I can just put a bit of clarity around the mm -hmm. paper. Um, so I have worked with his worship on this paper. Um, he has the right to appoint chairs and deputy chairs where he feels um, he wishes to do so. So that's why in some of these you will see a chair, deputy chair. What he suggested then is whoever would like to be um, part of these committees that they be um, called for from the floor. So that, that's why there's no names there. It's, it is around the council deciding who that should be. Um, there will be a Tarupu Ahika member, um, and we will get that nomination from Tarupu Ahika, but to complete the members list, it shows in there at the moment. So everyone's happy with that one. So um, this is an infrastructure committee. Um, no doubt, Mr. Toombs. Um, earlier comments on the start performance of the finance committees. We're talking about the real, the real, the real, <laughs> the real committee, the real committee here. Um, so, assets and infrastructure. You'll see myself, Councillor Wilson as chair, Councillor Lambert as deputy chair. Uh, who else would like to be involved in the assets and infrastructure committee? As I thought, yeah, it's, a, it's a pretty much a full house. So we have all, all, all the members sitting here. Is anybody that doesn't, it's probably a better Jared way to go. Jared, will you hand up for assets and infrastructure? Um, I, I didn't have okay. my hand up for that one. Okay. <laughs> Just a quick question. The two councillors that aren't here, what's the, what do we do with them? We'll have a chat with them. I think it's probably the best way to go yeah. if, that's, if that's appropriate. As they're, as they're not here, and, and they both, and we have received apologies from both yeah. of them as well. Unless they've put their wishes forward to the mayor, which yes. I'm not aware of. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so has that been re that been recorded? Have we got the names that we need for that? Kezia? So can we just have a hands up? Yeah. Just in case. Just keep it in box. Oh, I'm already on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we well, you yourself off now. Yeah, no, no, no. If you want my hand, I'll leave my hand. Thank you. Oh, yes, got me. Yeah. Okay, we'll just take our time to work through this, please. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, let's get this right. Anyone want to see? I hope that's all okay. there. Yeah. So with finance performance, again, we have the chair and deputy chair. Um, so we will call for councillors and a track member, but we will continue the current approach with two community reps for the um, community grant scheme applications part of the finance meeting. Which we have done the last try. So we will so put in um, at a... So no finance and performance, here. hands up those. Oh, um, so is Adina. Yeah, Dana, Dana's on. Dana's got a hand up. <laughs> she's got a question. She's got a question. 
Um, while, while we're going through that, if I may, uh, Adina, you've got your hand up. Um, can you just confirm that's an error? I don't actually have the hand up, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do on our screen, but um, oh, weird. Sorry, that's all right. Um, yes, yes, Tata, no, Wong, Dickie, no, 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 Clarify your earlier comment from this morning. Thank you. Um, I'm going to miss all the names. Okay. So can everyone see that's confirmed you're happy? Okay, pushing on. Uh, so policy planning. So at the moment, um, His Worship has appointed Councillor Hebra as chair to this committee. But we are signalling that um, the scope of this committee may change. There's options around um, whether we form it to look at submissions, for example, or other other things. So as part of the workshop that we're having on the 8th of December, we will discuss the terms of reference, and that is this one in particular. Still seeking an indication yes. from this one. So indication this one with policy and planning, we have Councillor Duncan. Is that a hand up? Um, or? The Mayor did ask me at one of the meetings whether I'd be prepared to, to be deputy to this. And I said yes at the time, so that's changing. Is that what you're saying? I think, sorry if I can go through you. I think um, if that was a request made to you, we, I'm happy to record it there. Um, and we will, this, the scope of this may change. It won't be for a few yeah. months. So, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, get, let's yeah. get your name up there and we can confirm mm. that at a, mm. at a later stage. Yeah. So we have Councillor Duncan, hands up for this one with policy and planning. Councillor Lambert. Is anybody else? In there, I'll be throwing my hat into the ring of that one. Okay, uh, yes. okay. okay. Yeah. Councillor Morn, you're expressing an interest in, in, in that one as well. Yep, thank you. That's okay. great, thank you. Thank you. Um, next one, um, the risk and assurance. So, straight away, the uh, generally the chairs of all. Um, of all the standing committees uh, would be would be members of that. So that would be uh, Wilson, Dalgetty and Hira as as a standard given. Um, anybody else wish to be in or oh, and, and Dalgetty of course too, sorry. And, yeah. Yeah. and his wish at the mayor will be yeah. the um, deputy chair. Councillor Loudon as well has expressed an interest in being in that space. Remember, all of these committee meetings are open to all members to attend at any time. Uh, general practice and rule of thumb is that you would be given speaking rights by whoever it is the chair of, is of the day, um, but just may be restricted to uh, the decision making and voting. But, so anyone can attend any meetings at any time in that respect. Councillor Duncan. I have a question. Um, when it comes to attendance and um, speaking rights, is that something that has to be confirmed at every meeting, or will that be somewhere that's written into uh, generally accepted that, that, that you will have speaking rights but not voting rights if you're not a member? I think, I'm not sure if that's in outstanding orders, but it certainly would be best practice, I think, if it's confirmed at every meeting by the chair. I would have thought. If, if, it, couldn't be, if it couldn't be clarified outside as being a written given, it would certainly want to be clarified by the chair at each meeting. It's not a difficult thing to do, but it would be it would be good to just get it clarified in every meeting. I would like to comment on that further. I just think that, uh, it's important to note that the members who have been elected, who are holding the roles, form the quorum. Yes. yes. So uh, there are rules around quorum. If members who are not on here attend, they are not part of the quorum. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you might have mm -hmm. half of your members here, but not enough of the quorum, many can't go ahead. Yeah. So um, just for Turugu Ahika Committee, um, obviously we already have an appointed chair. Um, Councillor Hero, in her capacity as a track member, has been appointed as the deputy chair, so that will not change. Um, and then there are spaces for two elected members, of which His Worship is one. So we are only looking for one other 
councillor to be on this committee. Just just on that one, it did come up in a conversation that I had with the uh, the mayor around this, uh, and I, I believe that the mayor and and myself were desirable of having a chat with um, councillor Hira as the as the chair um, of of that, or as as, as as the deputy chair of that, as to um, her thoughts on that subject. So, if everyone's happy happy with that. We'd just like to defer that one, if we may. Can you explain but, what that committee involves? Yeah. Um, Councillor Dalgetty. Oh, I just um, would like to acknowledge um, Councillor Duncan's enthusiasm in the space and um, the I would really hope that she'd be interested in doing it again and continue there. Okay, yeah. yep, no problem with it. So just <laughs> we leave it open for our Mary Wood to be on the uh, I think we should have that conversation with um, with, oh, the yeah. with the deputy chair. Yeah. Um, but to come come back to um, your question, um, uh, Councillor Moore and, and anyone step in correct me if I'm wrong, the Ruby A car is a standard uh, a standing committee of, of council which represents all the different uh, iwi and hapu in the region. Um, they uh, share a standard uh, meeting format procedure and, and often is our sounding platform for a number of our, uh, specific, uh, specifically our policies and uh, as an engagement platform which we go on. It's not a, a meeting that councillors can attend of as of, as of right. Uh, you would be uh, asked asked to attend. The mayor, of course, is ex officio on all council meetings, and in the past we've generally had a um, councillor representative also being involved. Who I think was Jill last last triennium. Uh, councillor Duncan, correct me if I'm wrong in, in saying what I've just said. And then Councillor Duncan, yeah. in that order. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Did that answer your answer yeah. your question? Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Duncan, do you have okay. further question? Just in the interest of um, efficiency, if it did come that the consultation with um, Councillor uh, Tracy Pikitiora here or uh, was that I continue on there, I would be happy to accept that. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. We'll, um, we'll relay that um, relay that further back. Uh, really, uh, nothing more than just a matter of courtesy of having that conversation with uh, with Councillor Hewitt. Another question, please. Yes, Councillor Um, Is Councillor Ra Rakawa on that committee um, by virtue of other... Um, yes, yes I, I believe she is a member of that committee as well. Yes, she represents her, anyway. Yep. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and you're right, outside of, outside of Council. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, Youth Council. Um, so again, as um, the Mayor, as a, uh, as a matter of right, ex officio, uh, any other councillors looking to express an interest to be in, in the Youth Council space? Councillor Dalgini, it's a, it's a space for one. There's a couple of hesitants. I was happy to be the alternate. When... So we've got a hesitant <laughs> hand going up. Is that, a, is that a strong hand going up or is a hesitant hand going up? You go. Uh, it's, a strong it's, a hand. it's a strong hand, but um, yes, uh, I very much enjoyed my role on that and would love to continue. However, um, it did come up on several occasions where His Worship the Mayor was not able to, to attend and the meeting was in the southern um, part of the um, district. And it occurred to me that it, it might be really good to have more than one, one councillor so that um, that we could cover the district and also have another perspective. So is that a suggestion of an and or? Yes. Position and can we do that? As well as. Is it is it is an and or an option in that? Yeah, as an option. Yeah. 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 Would you be happy in, if that was yourself, Councillor Duncan uh, Delgetti? Is that what you're yes. indicating? I, I just noticed um, last training it was noted as an alternate. Yeah, which so. Happy for that to retain. Well, Councillor Duncan, you're happy if we if we proceed along that line yes. and with Councillor Dalgetty as an alternate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, just with the Chief Executive Review Committee, so um, Councillor Hira has been appointed as the Chair, but all councillors will sit on this one. So um, we'll note all councillors, and uh, it was really to confirm Councillor Hira's chairmanship rather than the membership of this one. Uh, Creative Community Committee, I thought we'd had a discussion around that one. No, that's the um, community initiatives. The other one. So this is a separate committee which is made up mostly of external people, plus his worship the mayor and one councillor. Questions of uh, sorry. Um, I believe that I'm already on there. Yeah. Are we, we, okay, we can that's, motion that. That's what I was thinking that yeah, we'd already we'd already dealt with that one. Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll put you in there okay. now, Councillor Duncan, oh. for, uh, so, and to see clarity, is it? The clar clarification was when I put that recommendation to the last meeting, it was for that one meeting. Oh. So yeah. it's whether you want to continue, because we made it just for the November 2022 meeting. Please just remind me. So this is now the permanent appointment. Um, um, so I'm, I'm happy to take that position, but then if it was just for that one meeting, um, once again, then it should be open for other people to put their hands up, perhaps. Otherwise, I'm happy to... expressing an interest in that, in that committee? Uh, so, Councillor Duncan, it's all Thank yours. You. All right. The next one is the Maori Land Rates Remission Subcommittee. Um, this rate meets on a very, very rare basis. Um, I think we may have had one meeting in the last triennium. thinking on that and um, just my thinking alone is that Councillor Delgetti as Chair of Finance. Uh, uh, Councillor Wong, you'd be interested in being in that space. Okay. And the next one is the Hearings Committee. Again, His Worship the Mayor is the Chair of this and, and depending what the hearing is about, which is usually regulatory matters or dog matters, um, we appoint as appropriate, or the Mayor does. Rural water supply. Happy to continue. Yeah. Councillor Lambert. Yeah, just a, a as for full transparency, I am sitting on that committee as a farmer mm -hmm. representative. Okay. Is that Era 1? Era 1, who was in the... <laughs> Council Hero is the current representative, is that correct? Um, okay, again, unless, is there anybody else expressing? I'll, I'll turn it if... Um, I'm interested. I oh, know it's out of my area, but I just want to understand this rural water. Yes. Yeah, um, and and she, she was saying, or Councillor Duncan is saying that it's four yeah. times a year. Oh, certainly, Councillor Moore, you have a uh, yeah, you have an interest in that area with your you know, with your, your significant farming background and 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 that uh, that side of things. So, would you be happy to be in in there as a representative on that one? Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. yes. With uh, as a Northern representative, uh, Councillor Wong as a alternative, is that an appropriate way forward? Yeah. Would that be okay to proceed along those lines? Okay. Kezi, are you happy with that? Uh, Otamani Rural Water Supply Management Committee? Aimatani. Aimatani, sorry. I'm happy to continue. Councillor okay. Duncan. And now we move into the um, community committees. So nominations closed last Friday. Um, they will hold their will hold their first meeting next week. We've got a couple of meetings for the others in December. Um, so while we don't have full contingent for some of them, um, I've chatted with His Worship and we've agreed that we will form the committee as per the nominations that we've received. Um, and then seek further nominations if they come to, to the committee. With Martin, we received more nominations than places, but again, we've said it was only one extra, so at this stage, his worship was happy that we had 11 members, and we'll just see how that one forms themselves. 
did you want to go through those with regards to the councillor yes. uh, on, on, on those ones? So looking at Turakina uh, Committee, uh, again, as Worship the Mayor, as the uh, ex officio officer on all those, Turakina, uh, Councillor Carter, thank you. Uh, Bulls Community, uh, I guess we're Councillor Carter and yeah, Councillor Kalkin. And those two. Martin Community Committee, uh, I'll put myself forward with that one. Anybody else wishing to join me? Councillor Morn, yeah. thank you. Hunterville. Hunterville. I guess that's Councillor Lambert. Yeah, same too. And the strong guess is that's probably Councillor Dalgetty following suit. <laughs> Thank you. Sent off reserve management. I think that was you, Councillor Carter. Councillor Carter on that one. And McIntyre Reserve. Just with clarity around this one, um, we have been in contact with the committee um, that members, and at this stage, they don't want to hold a meeting until. Um, I haven't heard that in regards to the next date of their meeting, but we haven't had an official meeting. Yeah, 2018 was the last one. We have formed a new committee. Um, so we, we will be in contact when we hear back from that, those committee members. Okay. So the problem last Trillium, um, uh, it has to be a Northern member, Northern mm. Wharf member. Yes, yes that's correct. So, we're happy with that. Sorry, Councillor Wong. With the McIntyre Reserve. Oops. Which put your name forward for the McIntyre to win when that uh, committee sets its structure up. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Wong. Councillor Wong? Yeah. And um, thank you, Councillor Carter. Um, so we need nominations for the Ratana Community Board and the Taihepe Community Board. And so we are looking at 10.3. Um, before you go, I need to, to move. Uh, oh, yeah, we're still so, so you're on recommendation four of 10.2. You've filled in the table, but we need to. Oh, just, we've still, we've still got two minutes to do yeah, that. Yeah, we've got that. That's right. Also, we can schedule. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 One position on Ratana. So they they will um, hold their first meeting on the 13th of December, where they will elect their chair and deputy chair. And Tai Happy meets on the 14th of December, where they will elect their chair and deputy chair. So it is one councillor for each of those. What about the councillors that are not here? I'll take a seat in the meantime. Okay. On both of them. Okay. So we just, this, so that's a recommendation for your seat. Yes. Yeah, I'm with the meantime. Yeah, I'm with. 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 i his Worship yeah. said he will, um, would like to talk to members that aren't currently here. Okay. Yeah. He will sit on that until yeah. he's spoken to. Councillor Duncan, question for me. He's had a question. Um, so last time there were two, two of the three councillors from the Northern Ward were took turns to be on the Taipei Community Board. Um, so now you're saying there's only one position for that board? So, so one for Ratana Community Board and two for the from the Northern General Board. Yes. I have actually spoken to Councillor Hebel. Yeah. We, so is there a recommendation that you're suggesting that you can now put forward for that having indicated that you've spoken with uh, your other Northern Ward Councillor? Yes, I could. Um, or one I could. of your other Northern Ward Councillors, I should say. 
I would happy to to um, put myself and Councillor Longford if he was in agreement. Could we have that as a as, as a note there? And Councillor Wong, you're happy with being in that space. Councillor Duncan, you're happy with that too. Thank you. With the right on the preface, had three doing a year each yes. in the southern ward, but now we've got two. But also got our mural ward representative. Again, yeah, that's probably a subject that the conversation you'll need to have uh, with the, the, the third representative, effectively in your area, which we can do that and trace it. Okay, so with regards to that and those um, slots that have now been filled, we'd like to move recommendation for the following committee structure members should be confirmed for the 22-25 training. Recommended Councillor Duncan, seconded from Councillor Lambert. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion is carried. On the grounds of that, I now get to... Uh, Educate the train. Your Worship, your back. Would you yeah. like to move it uh, uh, at the three o'clock one? It's for five minutes, ten minutes. Your choice. Okay. Recommendation that we adjourn the meeting now for a quick break uh, while I perhaps update as Worship the Mayor on where we're up to on the agenda and uh, we can then move forward from there. So five minutes? Five minutes yeah. if the committee's all in agreement with that. Yes, yeah. thank you.
Uh, thank you, councillors, and thank you to those online. I apologise for not being here at the start of the council meeting. Uh, I was on recently urgent council business. Thank you, to the Deputy Mayor, um, Councillor Wilson, for filling in for me um, very well, apparently. So um, thank you for that. Are we just having technical issues? We'll and we'll have a technical issue now. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, look, I'm going back to page one. Um, looking at the recommendations around adopting standing orders, as I understand it, you've adopted A, B and you've let item C lay on the table waiting for a decision. And so I'll open it up and I would understand by that that, that you'd be interested in my view, is that? Um, I think it's useful to adopt A, but in actual reality, often we, ad we accept some of the principles of C. So remember that it's at the chair's discretion, some of this. But for instance, I can think of a number of times where a mover has moved something, there has been a seconder, and then councillors have suggested a change. And then we've gone back and said, as the mover and seconder, happy with the suggested change. Those are some of the elements of, of option C. So my personal preference would be option A, because it does set some rules around this. But I think probably my advice is anybody cheering, um, in my, certainly my time on council, has allowed a little bit more debate around amendments. Councillor Duncan. I have a question, yes. Um, so in the case that we are uh, abiding by um, uh, option A, and there is a point where a council would like us to, other than the chair, would like option uh, more lenient options to be used. Can they request that of the chair during the um, meeting, or is it uh, is entirely up to the chair's discretion to give that option? No, they could request it, but the but the decision ultimately sits with the chair of the committee. Um, but one of the. the the changes really are around whether um, the mover or seconder can then put up amendments and so on. Um, what I'm saying is that's tended to happen by discussion and agreement by the mover and seconder. So that's that's my personal view. I certainly don't um, if. If the consensus decision is option C, absolutely fine. Councillor Lambert. Oh, I'm happy to support option A. So are you prepared to move that? Yep. Be looking for a second. Councillor Wilson, are you prepared to second that? I have, I have, have a second. I have a question. Certainly. Does option A limit debate? In my experience, no. Um, the councils have often Often with debates, the, the, the chief, sorry, not the chief executive, the mayor or chair will tend to look at the item and will often set aside standing orders regardless. So if there's a contentious issue, um, often what happens is that, uh, if I've been in the chair, for instance, I've said, look, I'm gonna set aside standing orders with the permission of everybody where everybody gets <coughs> to and we go around the room the chair would have the right to be able to say, you get the opportunity, everybody gets the opportunity to speak, but only speak once. Um, that's probably, um, that's used very often for very contentious issues. That's been the practice, which allows a far greater degree of debate than probably any other option on the table. Um, being new to this, does option C give you a chance to speak more than once? Um, yes, because you could be speaking to several different amendments. 
So if an if an amendment is moved and fails, the, there's people speaking to it and fails. It isn't the only amendment, but it does give the right for the mover and seconder of the motion to be able to be part of the discussion. But that's something historically we've tended to do. The interest in Council Wilson's view. Uh, I, I agree with your first your first point, uh, Your Worship, regarding um, uh, the mayor slash chair's uh, option to set aside standing uh, standing orders. Uh, I've seen you in your capacity do that on a number of occasions around this council table to enable greater debate and greater discussion from all councillors. Uh, and it has been done in a in a uh, formal environment, but not a restrictive environment, uh, where every member is free to speak, uh, particularly on matters of uh, uh, contention, but matters of, of great concern to our wider community. I've seen that used used very well, and I would encourage the further use of that as we go forward. I don't think um, I don't think it, it restricts uh, debate. Um, what uh, Councillor uh, Loudon's just question has asked, although it's a good, it's a good question, but I, I believe that there does need to be um, some formality to the to the proceedings that a, a chair can utilise. Um, um, should it be required to for um, for um, greater flow of the meeting? So I'm certainly comfortable with my uh, my seconding of the uh, of the recommendation. So we've had two speakers in favour. Are there, I'm doing this formally to show you that it can be done formally. Are there any other speakers? Cook no, goes hand he hand. doesn't actually. Um, <laughs> if there's a problem with anyone who sits in that area, <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on it here. I will speak in favour. I'll speak in favour, uh, and I, I agree with what the mayor has said. Um, let's leave the power with at the discretion of the chairman, um, and he has on many times in in, in the last training um, let everyone contribute to the debate. And I'll just make a further comment, um, Councillor Loudon. Sometimes the decision from the chair goes the other way. And by saying that, what I'm saying is there will be a number of items that come to the chamber where you get a sense from the chair that everybody is likely to be in favour of the motion. And literally the chair may well then say, look, in terms of moving the meeting on, is there anybody wishing to speak against us? And so it, it shortens up what is um, can be a, a longer process. But any, we've had three speakers for, any speakers against? Councillor Moore. Yeah, I, I take all, everything on board, what you've said, and that, yeah, you can take the option of, not use an option A. Um, my opinion is why not formalise it and say this is um, you know, in our um, standing orders that option C is the way we we operate and do business. It, um, of option A totally depends on the chair saying that we will defer standing orders to have this debate. So we've got a chair that's you know more inclusive like yourself. You could get somebody up there like Mr. W oh, no, I cannot say that, <laughs> um, but. Uh, it does not want to uh, uh, t remove standing orders, so I just feel a little bit more informal in option C. It gives a lot more uh, debate and chances for the whole committee to put their header around and amend them. So I'll speak against the motion as it stands. Any other speakers against the motion? Because there has been a speaker against, I'll go back to write a reply. Oh, well, uh, Councillor Wilson summed up, but he, I think option A is the best of both worlds. It provides a structure and the legal requirements we need to, to have a debate, but as you say, it leaves the option to the chair. And having been a returning councillor, I feel option A works very, very well. We've now had a right of reply. I must put it to the vote. And those in favour of the motion? Motion's carried.
can we just have a show of hands? We need a single privacy <laughs> of those present. Thank you. Are you satisfied? <coughs> Thank you. We now move to Thank you. Ten point three page sixty eight. One six eight. One six eight, sorry. Um this is the adoption of schedule of meetings. Who wishes to speak to this? Um, I can. Um, we put together a proposed schedule of meetings for um, next calendar year. Just making a note in there that we do have a number of workshops set aside. Um, it always is heavy at the beginning of the year due to the formation of the annual plan. Um, so yes, there will be a number of workshops. Where we, where we can, we have tried to keep meetings on a Thursday, but often they have clashed with other things and I've noted that in the schedule so you'll see why a meeting may have to be on, on a Wednesday. Um, also as we didn't know what the committee structure is I've just put committee meetings in some of the some of those Thursdays and we'll go through I'll go through with the mayor and we'll sort out which are going to be policy planning, um, assess infrastructure etc and I'll send calendar invites out over the next week to you for these. <coughs> March 1st council workshop, um, all the ones prior to that are annual plan, will that be annual plan too? Prior being annual plan to the drafts on the 15th of March? Um, possibly, it depends yeah. if, we do, if we need it for that or we need something else, yeah. It's a placeholder as it such, is. isn't yeah. it? <coughs> Somebody like to move a motion, put a motion on the table and uh, it's adoption with or without any amendment. Councillor Moore. Uh, Making a motion. With, with or without amendment. Ah, oh, without amendment. Looking for a seconder to that. Councillor Wilson seconding. Do you wish to speak to it? No. Those in favour? Is that to Those against? Carried, thank you very much. Moving to on to reports for information 11, I believe. Well, that's me again. This is pecuniary interests. Yes. Um, Gordon, do you thank want to take us through this? Uh, yes, thank you. So, um, new legislation came into effect um, this week in terms of pecuniary interest, and this paper outlines. Um, what the expectations are of council and what um, the new provisions um, have been. And so one of the main differences for, especially for count, returning councillors, is that we now need to make a summary of your pecuniary interests available on the website, and it is kept for seven years. And while I've been the keeper of the um, register in the past, we have to have a formal notification that that I am the registrar of, um, of that document. So I've tried to just sort of briefly outline what, what the main changes are in terms of um, the updates from government. This is really to bring it in line with what MPs have to, have to disclose. And um, I do have a, this booklet that Simpson Grayson actually provided to Tai Tūra is really quite handy, so I've printed off a copy for you all to take away to give you more detail about it. There is a sample um, return, pecuniary interest return form, and I suggest that we actually follow that form and um, fill it in. And so I will provide that to you all to fill in, I think the due date to get it back to me is in the middle of February. So I'll get it out to you in plenty of time for that. Um, so can I just... Can I just ask how specific this needs to be? For instance, is it appropriate if you're, you have a directorship or ownership of um, agricultural companies that you could just list it as a block? Or do you have to, do you have to detail every single one of them? For instance, for me, I have um, some tourism interests, for example, do I need to detail each one separately or do you just say I, I, 
interests in um, that sector or mm. agriculture or I think where the form actually asks for the name of each organisation. So I would think that you need to list them. It's probably going to be onerous the first time you do it, but I think you need to list them all. Yeah, I'm just I'm digging here <coughs> for councillors, yes. really. Yeah. Councillor Duncan. Um, I think that's very interesting that it's come to us now and that um, really this sort of requirement should have been made clear to candidates putting their names forward before they actually went for, for um, position. The fact that we are already in the position and then this is being brought to us, um, to me, is not a good process. Um, and I'm assuming this came from um, central government and it's part of their transparency, etc. And I'm sure none of us have got dark black secrets, but the fact is it should have been put forward as a requirement of a candidate that going into local government rather than being being brought to us now. Can I can I just ask staff um, in terms of following this out, does this get sent on to any other person or do we just retain it as a council file? It goes on the website, but if you have a look at what the um, MPs summary is on the council website and there's a link to it in this document um, I think that's where your question that you can roll up your interests can be so it's a summary of your we don't publish the whole form on it. What the penalties have you done? Five thousand dollars. <laughs> yes. So for example the um, annual returns are they on the website? No, the annual returns are retained by myself as the registrar, but a summary is available on the website. So what is in the summary? Is it actually figures or just who you belong to? Or not sure if we can get up on the... I'll see if I can actually get the... On the while you're searching for that, and um, what I'm what I'm suggesting is, for instance, um, I don't see personally. I don't see the need for individual properties. For instance, if you're part of a farming group and you own a number of individual properties. That I would believe that you could just say that you had agricultural mm -hmm. interests, um, you know, within the district. But, um, and if that forms the summary, I, I'd be fine. But mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm sure that there are a number of you that'd be hesitant about, you know, listing every commercial property or. Business or shares. That's question two, Your Worship. Sorry. Um, if yes, please provide the name of the of the company or companies. <coughs> so you can list them all. Does, when you look at that, it does, you would need to specify which companies. <coughs> Can these be implemented next triennium? <laughs> yeah. Now that we know about it, since it's been after the um, after our nominations, you wouldn't have. You, you, yeah. you must comply. Yeah. Mm. I don't know about it, I wouldn't apply it. Anybody can go and put, put your name in and your company's register and you'll come up with all your companies anyway, so. That's what I know about it. It's even, it's worse because they're asking you about your travel overseas and it's paid for by another person or, or company. By mum. Yeah, you've got to put two. Yeah, even. Yeah. Um, look, what I'd suggest uh, as um, two councillors, um, 
you individually do what you feel is appropriate. And we see where that goes to with the, the register at this end. Thank you, Mrs. Gordon. <laughs> question from Jared. Jared. Um, <clears throat> just a question from me. How often, I, I see it says a 12 month period covered, but do, does that mean we have to provide this return annually? It does. But you've got the option of saying there are no changes, that mm. effectively, no changes, or you just add to it. Councillor. Duncan, just a quick question. Have um, LGNZ have had anything to say on this or done any consultation on behalf of our sector? No, but there's been a shortage of LGNZ. It wasn't brought up at Rural and Provincial. Um, it hasn't been listed as an interest item for its own. There is a meeting of the regional chiefs where we've got to have an agenda together by December 5. If you would like us to um, bring it up at regional chiefs, um, I'm more than happy to do so. <coughs> Subsequent, yes, I would. I would like that brought up um, yeah. because I feel that it, it is a, it's an issue and um, and it's an imposition, I believe. Mm. Um, staff, could we re just regard that as an action, please? That that interest gets lodged at uh, regional chiefs. Uh, we have a zone meeting tomorrow and the next day. Mm. Do you want to brought it up as a supplementary item at zone, if time permits? And the chairman allows, and the chairman's actually me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a good one, isn't it? I'm happy to bring it up its own if that's what you yeah. would like to do. Can you make a note for zone meeting? No. However, um, it is the law. So the first thing we really do is need to do is move the recommendation that the members' pecuniary interests be received. Councillor Wilson, Councillor Lambert, those in favour? Those against? Carried. And recommendation two, that the council delegate under section 54G of the Local Government Act Authority of the Chief Sector to appoint this is the appointment of the register. It gives the delegation to the chief executive to appoint. Those in favour? Sorry, I'm happy to move. Yep. Councillor Wilson, Councillor Duncan, seconding. Um, put it to vote. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. So essentially, you need to fill this out and, and in the way that you see is appropriate and it will be questioned. It is some protection for you, by the way. It's not, not totally a bad thing. We've just emailed you all the link to what the MPs show, and it is very summarised. Um, thank you. I move to. Sorry. Oh, just very, just for clarification. So you'll you'll send us the paperwork to fill in, and do we date the start of the year from the when we got elected? No, I'll give you all that detail. Oh, you've got it right, okay. We'll be there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, time. It has to be a calendar. It has to be a year. So it's okay. actually from last February, sorry, February 20, January 2022 to January 2023. So you do it for the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, well, can I just get some assurance that any information that we give you, Carol, will, will just stay with you? Yes. However, you've got to produce a summary sheet on the website. Yeah. And like yeah, I that, yeah. Yeah. Could that summary sheet be emailed to councillors prior to, prior to, to circulation on the website? That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Mr. Chief Executive, you're the one with the delegated authority. You're happy for that to happen? Yes, I'm uh, delegated to, um, to uh, Carol, so, <laughs> as, a, yeah, as a registrar, so yes. And so you're happy to circulate yes. that before it goes live? Yes. Thank you. Moving to 11.2, this is the rate player query. Um, and 
Is there somebody that's going to take us through this? Um, Mr. Beggs or Mr. Toombs? <coughs> Mr. Toombs, you wish it. Mr. Toombs. Yeah, the paper's ready for um, elected members. Just a note following on from Councillor Moore's comment this morning that people come and talk. Is there, is there an action afterwards? Just to, to let you all know that someone that spoke at the public forum will be um, I guess communicated with. Yeah, so Mr. McLean appeared in front of council as a public forum um, with an interest. Um, he felt as though he was being unfairly rated. He didn't understand the separate, um, unoccupied, separate, what's the term, yeah, sort of, um, rules around connection. I'd also been to see him prior to that and said that I, I believe council was acting appropriately. However, could somebody move that it be received as an inquiry? Councillor Wilson, thank you. Councillor Carter, those in favour? Those against? Okay, question? Councillor? No, you just, you just won't okay. move on. Recommendation two, would somebody be happy to so move? Councillor Wilson, this is the notes, the proposed actions, etc. Second to Councillor Duncan. Any discussion? Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you very much. We move to uh, 11.3. This is the project managership office report. And we have Adina online. It's Adina, you're taking us through this? Yes. And Thank we'll you. do it section by section. Thank you, and um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so the first project is the Marta de Vos um, Wastewater Centralisation Project. Are there any questions to this one? Uh, yes. Um, in the first area, there is um, one piece of sidewalk that needs replacement and a few things to be fixed. But further down, you mention a design of a pipe bridge continuing. What's the pipe bridge? Yes, um, so the pipeline itself, the construction of all of it has been completed with the exception of um, three pipe bridges. They're quite small crossings and the connection to the um, treatment plants in Martin and in Bulls. So we are just closing out the last final pieces to, to actually make it fully complete. <laughs> so that, that's just a mention of that. And from me, in terms of this project, that is a very large project, and I can understand the section B not being able to have a price put on mm. it at the moment. But in terms of D, the upgrades of treatment plants at Martin and Bulls, um, do you have a budget against that subsection at the moment? I think uh, the issue is a little bit that they're all very reliant on each other. So the the output that we are putting to land is um, important, obviously, depending on the land. So, so maybe we have to treat the water to a higher level or to a lower level. So this is where it's a little bit hard to separate these out. Um, but I can have a look into and see what the estimate is. But at the moment, because it's all sort of inter interlinked, we can't really, um, you know, single out one item rather than others. There must have been some sort of process around this to to end up with a budget at 25 million. And I can look up what that was um, if you want and get back to you on this. Thank you. Um, Councillor Moore? Um, just on B again, the purchase of the land. Mm -hmm. It seemed, well, I'm only new on council, obviously, but it seems strange to me that we've started with the piping project and haven't even had the land to um, do our irrigation on. Is there, what's the risk of not being able to get the land required or the area required? Thank you. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. So the reason why we went ahead with the pipeline is that, that we had government funding obviously secured for this part of the project. And there's a huge benefit on combining the wastewater from Martin and Bulls. 
So even, say, hypothetically, there is no land available in the next few years, there is still benefits of combining the wastewater and then treating it um, and, and disposing of it um, in other places. But um, that's why we, we built the pipeline and felt confident enough, enough about this. Um, the land purchase is a quite a, you know, a difficult process. So we are in the process of identifying suitable land and trying to work out um, how we contact some of the landowners that have suitable land in the Bulls area. And um, yeah, it's just a matter of finding that piece of land or maybe multiple. So we're not reduced to just one piece of land. It's a lot of land that is required for this amount of um, wastewater. I, I have speakers from Council of Dal interest of speakers, Council of Dalgetty, Council Wilson, and uh, Chief Executive of Council Councillor Dalgetty, Council Wilson, Council Dalgetty. Thank you, Adina. You uh, answered my question without me asking. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just wondering what what was happening in the interim around um, obtaining that land. Uh, yeah, a good question. Um, so the interim is basically filled with uh, stakeholder engagement, looking at various options and combinations of, um, you know, um, the amount of output to land being higher, or being lower in a combination of um, irrigation to land and other holding areas. So the option analysis is a big um, part of the current process. The next thing that LEI would like to get um, started on is uh, stakeholder engagement with some of the farms or the landowners that are along the pipeline. And for that, um, I think the project update group that was formed, he was quite keen to start meeting with that group um, early December, ideally. So they are doing a lot of work in that space and there's some assessments that are needed to be done um, again, in, in regards to the land and the soil that is suitable, but also um, about the outputs of both the treatment plants and quality. There's so many factors that are all flowing in together. And that's why we thought, I mean, LEI was the right person to look after this project in a bit more holistic way, because it is such a big project and very high, um, high on the budget side. And just before past the chief executive by the way uh, thank you very much because I know that you've had to step in to take over this office um, along you. with your other work I understand the pressures and so thank you for that Thanks. the chief executive I was going to expand thank you your worship on um, Councillor Morn's question regarding the why we chose through the pipeline uh, you'll see in the report we received just under 3.9 million from the central government they had a defined timeline within which it had to be spent. And we looked at their wide project timeline for all of the sub projects of this one. And the pipe was the one that was going to go ahead no matter what. Uh, so we needed the pipe and it contributed to the seven point something million we've spent so far. Almost four million of that has been funded by central government. Otherwise we wouldn't have been able to use that money. Mm -hmm. And the problem is you can use the pipes even if you haven't got the land. Exactly, yes. There's a fundamental, I'll come back to you in a second, mm -hmm. Councillor. Um, there's a fundamental issue here around efficiencies and a huge proportion of the cost of a wastewater plant is in the consenting stage and literally you can spend millions on a consent um, and you haven't actually constructed anything to spend millions on two consents mm. when you can spend it once is an enormous saving. Councillor Allen. Well, it's just, um, what are the benefits of combining bulls and mountain wastewater? Um, but Adina said that there are huge benefits in combining the two. Um, can you explain? I'll just add to what I've said and I'll, then I'll pass it back to Ms. Foley. Um, so the first is a consenting process. The second is literally soil type. So at the Martin Wastewater at Crofton, you're sitting on top of what's called yellow grey earths and they have a very, very limited ability to be able to um, absorb waste effectively. So if you're going to do a land-based plant there, you would probably require hundreds of hectares of land compared to coastal strips. Um, and that the receive, when discharging to the 
string um, is no longer possible to non-receiving environment. So those are the two big ones from me. But Ms. Holly, do you want to add or say anything else? I would actually agree with you on this. Um, one of the biggest issues we have in Martin with the wastewater that is currently discharged in the Tutanui stream is that in summer that stream is basically dry and the only water that is going in there is treated wastewater, which is environmentally not a very good um, result. So even the combination bringing, bringing Martin towards um, Bulls, Bulls is currently discharging in the Rangatike River, um, is definitely an advantage. And the soil type is um, yeah, a very complex topic. And the more sandy soil you can have, the better it is. And Bulls has just a lot more of that. Um, so there's a higher chance of us being able to find this and needing less land. So that's always the, the focus, having less land, which will be less cost for us. Any further questions around this item? One more. Are there sure. time frames for discharges into Tupanu and or Rangitiki River that you need to stop doing that? We're, we're out of consent. Yeah. Consent has expired. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so it's we, we, with these consents, especially for new councillors, we've been able to negotiate a pathway with Horizons. In other words, where you've had plants that are non-compliant, they've said, well, let's look at the pathway to get compliance and have an agreed pathway within that. And if you step outside of that pathway, then um, literally we could be um, um, held up for fines. Yes. Yep. Uh, um, please correct me, because, but somewhere in my brain, I, I was thinking that we might be able to discharge to forest. Is it? That's incorrect, is it? Can I answer that possibly? Just, yeah, do you want to answer further? Yeah, um, the land um, can basically have anything on it. So any land is an option. The key thing is that the soil is um, ready to take a lot of water. And um, forestry is actually one that is being done um, towards Levin and in the Horofenua district. So it's quite a successful way to actually discharge water. Thank you. No further questions, I'll move to the next item. Thank you. Um, yeah, the next one is the Martin Industrial Park and Rail Hub. Any questions on this topic? Well, can I? Over there. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions about this? I mean, essentially, councillors, um, nothing happens until we get a judgment from the Environment Court. Mm. So there may well be all sorts of discussions around with interested parties, but until there's a decision made, um, we move forward from that, that place um, to either proceed or to look at other options. Any questions from councillors? Any further update from you? No. Moving to the next one. Thank you, Councillor Well. Next one is the Martin water strategy with the currently the construction of the water bore that is happening. Um, an update from my point of view is there that at the moment we have a screen that is stuck at about 125 metres which is not ideal. Um, so the contractor that is very well experienced has tried a, very, a few different um, methods to um, take the screen out again, uh, but unfortunately hasn't been successful. And it looks like we may need to uh, start a second bore two or three meters next to it. So it's not really a bore, it's like another pilot hole, sorry. So we need to start another pilot hole a few meters next to the original because of that stuck screen. This is something that seems to happen on uh, bore drilling projects every now and then, and is not ideal. Um, at the moment, the costing of that uh, issue is still within contingency, but um, we're just discussing with the contractor the best way forward, just as an update on this. I do know of a bore that's about five k's away from that one where they lost a drill bit at about 150 <laughs> metres. Right. That's the risks. Mm. 
So well said. Um, thanks, thanks, Dean. Two quick questions, and and on that one, um, we have we have seen these things happen before, and, and, sadly, and, and it does happen. So when we when we look in these projects from a costings analysis point of view, and, and you said that you know, the extra costing may be within within contingency, but does that ultimately um, it's an extra cost? Are we do we are we developing a, a bit of an issue here with the cost? I mean, if we use it all for this one consistency, what happens to the um, to the rest of the project? I guess is where I'm going. Um, I know that Anna was very confident in the total project budget, so I will have to go back on more detail. I think currently it fits within the contingency of this bore contract. Um, so I don't think there's a trend at the moment that we need to be alerted by, um, but obviously we are monitoring this closely. Yeah. Subsequent to that, um, yes, uh, Arno in his, in his absence has, has stated that he's very confident in the, in the total uh, project cost, which I think is a, is a good way to, um, to, for our focus to be. The second part I note here about um, some testing samples being mm. taken, is there any further update on that? Uh, yes, we have received them back. Um, and I will have to get back to you on the detail of what they showed. Um, but I think it was overall um, pretty good looking. Um, the water flow rate, uh, so they did a rate test as well, how much water can be taken sort of, um, I think, in every second. It's just, um, it, it was actually a really good flow rate, but it uh, is more like the height, of, there's a height of this aquifer um, that, ideally is actually more. So this first one that we found was a bit narrow. So we were just continuing the process to find a bigger one, which should give us even better flow rates. So they're not quite there yet of the rates that we need, uh, which is what is ex expected in this process. Um, but there will be hopefully in the next aquifer, we will reach the right rates. And I, if you have interest in it, I can you know, report back on the detail of those lab results for the <laughs> content. I'd certainly like to know with the, um, appreciate you at home there, uh, yes. uh, like to know what those results are, but also if you could just clarify, and not now, but what was our optimum flow rates we were requiring? I do believe we saw that at some stage. I can't remember what that optimum flow rate was that we were seeking um, for the success of this project. I will get back to you if that's all right on that and um, make a note. Just from me, um, could we just change the wording in these reports? I think I've mentioned this before, but in sub-project B, design of a new treatment plant and consenting, please, it is still at the site of the existing treatment plant and a, a refurbishment rather than a new, because people say, quite rightfully, does that mean that the $10 million plus that we spent on that plant is wasted? And I know that it, it won't be, that the storage, everything will be still used. But it's just the wrong message to the community. <coughs> yeah, no problem. Um, happy to move to the Martin Civic Centre. Any questions there? No? Move on. The Taiapi Town Hall Civic Centre. There's going to be a business report that comes to us. Is it December, January? I can't remember. No. Yeah, uh, yeah I think it won't be December. I've been um, struggling to get the designs back in time for um, the December meeting because we also need to do a QS um, calculation for this. Um, so yeah, I would be more confident in January. Councillor Duncan. Yes, uh, thank you. So the Taiapi Town Hall Civic Centre, the third paragraph down mentions an unsolicited offer received to strengthen the grandstand, um, although we are talking about the Taiapi Town Hall Civic Centre, but it's not actually noted under the further down um, the Taiapi grandstand. The offer has not list listed there. The unsolicited offer. I would have thought that's really where that that would be noted, rather than in, under the Tybee ta Town Hall. Yeah, certainly. The, um, if I may, thank you, Worship. Um, the 
the reason why it's in here is that um, partial or some use of the Thai Happy Grandstand is considered in the better business case for Thai Happy. And so um, that's why we've we've elected to only put it or pop it into the um, only into into the Thai Happy Town Hall part. Have I got that right, Adina? Um, supplementary to that. Supplementary to that, I would I would like to see that noted under the Tyvee Grandstand as well. Then, in that project, because if someone is just going to this by itself from the public and they went to Tyvee Grandstand, they would not they would not get that information. Um, I'll have a discussion with the with staff around how how we signal or, or the reasons for not uh, etc. You, would you be happy with that? I would. And supplementary one more time, please. Supplementary to supplementary. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'd also thank, uh, like to thank RDC staff for putting in um, the submission to the Grandstand Heritage Listing. Um, yeah, that, that was great. Thank you very much. Further questions? The only question I'd have around this, the unsolicited offer, did it have a, a time frame attached to it in which we had to make a decision? Uh, um, uh, Your Worship, so, so I'm just rereading um, the project status. And to be clear, we have received unsolicited offers for the Thai Heavy Town Hall and for the grandstand independently of each other. Um, they are. Uh, both time bound in terms of their validity, um, but that does not fit in with their um, process for decision making. So we will not be able to respond within their time frame. Um, so therefore, it would be an indicative consideration. <coughs> I would suggest there's a lot more that you would need to consider before accepting such an offer, um, but that will be for your consideration uh, in January. Um, could I just ask staff um, if, if this business case isn't on the table in December that there is at least um, a record of some correspondence around these offers um, in terms of you know do they are they been waived or foregone or whether um, that is possible still to keep them on the table their outside time limits ah uh, well I as, a, as an unsolicited officer, uh, as an unsolicited offer um, that has come outside of, of council's process, I haven't tried to um, speed up anything in order to come, you know, it, it, uh, to meet their time frame. Yeah. No, I was thinking um, of going back to the contractor and say, if we haven't been able to meet this date, this has been in has gone. Um, no, but my. My preference, Your Worship, would be to get the gauge of, of council before responding. Well, I have responded back to the okay. um, to the organisation, um, but to get guidance because I, I suspect you may elect to vary that requirement with the, should you go that path. Thank you. Tie Happy's amenity building, anyone? It seems to be on course, on budget, and it's met consenting conditions so far. It is, yeah. Um, we we officially um, have failed consenting conditions in the sense of um, certain documentation that will only be handed in at the end is relevant for that. But we've been working closely with our consenting team to make sure that it is all on board of you know what it needs to be. Thank you. Any further questions around that? Otherwise, try happy grandstand. So. We'll, the unsolicited offers are separate in nature, then I, this is where I expect to see it, Councillor Duncan. No? Move on to Lake Waipu, improvement right in a wastewater treatment plant. Questions around that, Councillor Carter? With Lake, 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 Lake Waipu, um, is there any costings involved in that with the rehabilitation of it? That Councillor doing, or is that on horizons? The rehabil rehabilitation of the lake is a separate Horizons project, so they are working on a plan and, and actions of how to do that. Um, 
just a, a quick update on that one is as well that we are lodging um, the consent this week, I think. So uh, has been reviewed internally by our staff and um, we're happy with where it's going. And so, yeah, that's a big step forward. Yeah, thank you. Moving on then to the regional treatment plant consenting program. And I sort of referred to this a little bit earlier, uh, Councillor Loud, and this is where there's an agreed pathway forward in effect. Um, any questions with regard to this? Say, you could say hi from us. Yeah, fine. Put her on your knees. Council says hello. <laughs> but I uh, don't think they're allowed to vote. <laughs> um, the Regional Treatment Plant Consenting Program, otherwise I'll move on. Papakai Pump Station, page 203. Questions around this? There's been a substantial discussion around this previously. Thank you. Moving on to um, I now believe we've got a recommendation. We've got to fulfill the project receivership of the reports. Looking for somebody to so move. Councillor Dalgetty, Councillor Wilson, those in favour? Aye. Those against? Thank you. Carrie. Um, we, yeah. um, we would appreciate guidance from councillors should they wish to have other projects listed in the miscellaneous section we'll be very happy to update at, at the request of um, your members yes and is that a general notification or do you wish to find any at, at current ones now uh, yeah. i'll take it if there are current ones that you want listed councillor wilson uh yes and i think i speak for councillor carter here um was on there it's miscellaneous we've got to put on it's dropped back off again but um scott's ferry pump thank you been on again and off again, but it seems to be off now. Um, I think we can take that as a given. Yes. Councillor Lambert. Oh, no, I, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'll just comment now if I can. With well, everything we've been under, it's so pleasing there wasn't one red arrow in that report. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. Okay. So we've moved and carried the recommendation of receipt of it, moving to 11.4. This is the options for council to incentivise affordable housing, housing, and um, I mean, are you going to take us through this? I am. Thank you, Your Worship. And just while you're sitting down, could somebody move the receipt of the report? Thank you, Councillor Duncan, Councillor uh, Mullen. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Your Worship, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this paper has been put up on the request of the Chief Executive, and I would like to point out that I went into some detail on the context and background on this, and I thought it was important to do that because Council has been engaged in a process over the last two years in which it has, I think, in a very systematic and methodical way, moved forward in the housing area to first try to quantify what the problems are, uh, to then talk about what Council's role might be. And then I think we're at the stage now where we've uh, encapsulated this sort of investigation in various foundation documents that the council relies on and has communicated with our rates payers on. There's been a fair amount of consultation about this uh, as obviously a sub uh, category in the LTP and also in our annual plan. Uh, we have various strategies that uh, touch on this. Uh, and we're now at the point where, again, in a methodical way, we're putting forward options to you to be able to consider what council's role might be in a subset of the overall housing area. Because we're talking in this case about affordable housing, and that is uh, low cost housing or low to, let's say medium cost housing aimed at low to medium uh, uh, income earners. And uh, sort of as a 
little bit of a digression, but I think it adds a little bit more to the context in this area. Along the way, and I didn't mention it here because I think it's sort of a self-evident fact, that there have been two social housing organizations that have emerged in the district over the last two years that have gained in uh, institutional capacity and are now at the point where they've gone out with a survey of, over the last, I would say, month, which will probably continue for another month or two, to be able to determine the level of demand amongst uh, low to medium income earners for affordable housing. And as part of that process, they're building off of a uh, heads of agreement that they've reached with Habitat for Humanity to be able to partner and to be able to offer housing options in the rent to buy and shared equity areas. Uh, so that's that's why there was so much buildup on the context and background. Then I think it was important to establish that we're not the only ones that are faced with these issues, that these are nationwide issues. And it was important to sort of touch base and talk a little bit about what our neighboring councils are also doing in this area. And the fact is just about all of them are engaged in the same kinds of discussions, the same sort of methodical progression of building the case for what their role should be and whether they would like to intervene in the market, and if so, how. And so that's why this table has been placed here, stating what all the neighbors are in, engaged in. And then also pointing out what is, what's their success to date based on? And I think it's instructive for us to be able to look at these pointers and say, well, we too are engaged in a number of these activities and possibly there might be one or two that we'd like to expand on. Um, then we go into a table which I've tried to color code, and for those who did not participate in the last triennium in the workshops that were held back in February and March, in which we talked about the different roles that council could play in this area, there are three, uh, well, actually, there are, there are four main roles. And those are uh, facilitation, uh, working as an enabler, council working as a partner with other parties or council as a standalone implementer of housing solutions. And then further, if you look at the table, you'll note that it's broken down into three main areas of council acti potential activity, or at least the putting forward of options in three main areas. And those areas uh, correspond to basically facilitation, which here is called technical assistance, changing or strengthening or providing a, guide, a guidance through the enabling environment. Uh, and then finally, uh, resources and assets. So that would be a more direct intervention. And uh, you'll see that most of the activities there fall into the, uh, I would say primarily the uh, Sorry, into the partnership and uh, implementation areas. Um, council as an enabler has a very large role. And I, I, I think it's important to highlight that and that it currently is occupying that role at present and is providing a very strong enabling environment, which can be tweaked, which can be upgraded, can be strengthened entirely uh, up to you all to decide whether in fact that's an area you'd like to look at. This paper, I think, uh, should be submitted as it stands, and uh, I would like to table it as such. It strictly is options. It's not <coughs> saying that anybody should do anything. It's just saying there are a very large number of interventions that council could choose to engage in, or for that matter, could not choose to engage in. So, thank you. That's enough of my part. I'll take questions from councillors first. Um, what, just while the councillors are thinking about this, a couple of questions from me. Um, in your mind, or is there any data to suggest that the pressure on housing has now eased? Because we seem to have a number of houses on the market that haven't been sold. And there are, you can now I, as I understand, find rental properties. Is that 
the feeling that you will get in? Well, I think it's sort of counterintuitive because the demand for housing hasn't decreased in my observation. What has decreased is the ability of the low to medium income earners to be able to access their own housing. And I say that because uh, obviously we're all aware of the inflationary environment within which we're living, as well as the increase in the uh, OCR rate, which is then uh, causing the amount, or at least the cost of money that banks are able to access from uh, the Reserve Bank to increase, which they then pass on to the public, to the potential home owner, in the form of an increase in uh, interest rate on the mortgage that they might then have to place with the bank. The ability of private, or let's say, first home buyers and various other people who fall into the low to middle income <coughs> earning category who would like to own their own house or would like to find a pathway to home ownership has been significantly reduced as a result of this perfect storm of increased cost. Uh, you're absolutely right, there, there is a slowdown in the market because people are not buying houses. People, I think, are anticipating that with uh, the increase in cost right across the board due to inflation in just about every area that involves household expenditure, uh, coupled with the fact that mortgage rates continue to rise and the fear of what's to come potentially with a, either a national or, for that matter, a worldwide recession. <coughs> I think pur large purchases and the ability to effect those large purchases, particularly by this uh, socioeconomic strata in our district, is really decreased and is really limiting their options more and more so. Okay. I've got a question from Councillor Calkin. Um, thank you, Your Worship, um, and thank you for your report. It um, can see a lot of lot of time and effort has gone into building this. Um, a, a question that comes to me as a result of um, some of the things you just mentioned, but we, we've got to also accept that there will be a large number of people who will never be homeowners. They will be lifetime renters, and... Um, do, do you view this as a as sort of a, a one one way to address that by providing affordable housing um, for some of those say lower um, salary earners to be able to get onto the onto the home ownership ladder and therefore make available further stock for some of those lifetime renters or, or do you see this as a way to be able to provide a better quality of property for some of those renters as well? Thank you for your question. I think the answer is uh, just as complex as the question. But nevertheless, to try to simplify, I think it, it, this does offer a pathway to home ownership to a larger group of low to middle income earners than possibly would be the case if also were not to think about some you, need, of the me, you need to face the mic so that it can be picked up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I think that the expansion of affordable housing is uh, potentially improved by some of the options that council may choose to uh, support in that there are many people who are, as you say, uh, who have been renters for many, many years and potentially without some sort of intervention in the market will remain renters probably forever. Nevertheless, there are <clears throat> options that enable people who are stable and trustworthy renters, who have a good track record, uh, who have a good credit rating regarding that, and who may have some small portion of the deposit that's required to purchase their own home, but do not have enough to be able to engage with a bank to pull down a conventional mortgage. At present, there are options encompassed within this report that are at the counselor's disposition to consider that might in fact 
open up and expand their ability to acquire a house as a renter. And that would be a rent to buy mm -hmm. program where they carry on paying the same level of rent that they're paying already. And they do so for a number of years. And at the end of that period, they would accrue a certain percent of the rent that they paid as a contribution that will be returned to them by the uh, company that they're engaged with. And that money that's returned to them, and it's generally about a third of what they pay in rent over, say, a five-year period, would then go to serve as their contribution along with whatever they may have in the form of Kiwi Saver, and for that matter, personal savings, to go as a uh, contribution toward the deposit that they would have to make to a bank. Yeah, I, think we, I, think we, I think we've got your answer. And um, there are other questions. I'm just looking to move on. I have Councillor Dalgetty, Councillor Wilson, Councillor Morn, Councillor Loudon. Um, Councillor Dalgetty. Um, thank you for your report. I wonder if there would be any benefit in um, your earlier reports that you presented at workshops being um, passed on to newly elected members because there's obviously a lot of work and um, background that goes into your reports. I'm not sure what, what the <coughs> that's allowed. But Certainly from mm. the chair, that would be absolutely permitted. Mm. Um, as councillors, you, <coughs> you should have available any report that's ever been available to council. But you can. Yeah. Uh, um, so I, I guess I, I'm um, worrying about the specifics in this realm. So let's go to Tui Street and can you update me? Uh, is that still a priority or where's that project at? at? My simple response to that is in the in the previous triennium council instructed us that is the staff to be able to prepare a submission which we did do to uh, submit as part of the overall submission for the better off funding uh, a portion that had to do with a uh, an investigation it was actually a consultancy that was going to be hired to be able to look into the Tui street uh, development and provide options for it. We're waiting for the response from government as to whether we receive the better off funding. And if so, I believe that with instruction from uh, my chief executive, that will trigger us moving forward with that process that council instructed us to proceed with in the previous triennium. Thank you. I am looking, for, starting to look for somebody to put a motion onto the table because we're starting to move beyond a little bit beyond questions, Councillor Wilson. Uh, I'm actually looking to move the um, move the move the motion to enable us to actually speak to it at the same time. Thank you. What is your motion? Um, I think option two up there, the recommendation that a report be submitted to the cemetery to discuss what relatively easy to, options is fair. So I'd like to move that as a starting point. It's an option, recommendation two. Just advice for councillors here, by the way. Um, these are recommended options, recommendations from from staff. If you, if you wish to put a different option or a different amalgam of them on the table, that's fair. Well, but you've put a motion there, so I need to call for a seconder. So you're staying with your motion, moving the no. motion as, as no, two? No, 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 no I withdrew it, draw it. Thank you. Um, did you have a subsequent question? Otherwise, I'll move on to another councillor. Uh, yeah, look, if, if, it, if it's okay with you, we should, yes, I do. And that, possibly forms. I'm actually not that comfortable that we need to be proceeding too much further with this body of work as a council. Um, and the reason that I say that is what it has done is it identified already in the work that's been done by Jaime and his team 
has identified a number of options that may be available to us should we get a suitable partner to work with. A suitable partner to me has not been identified and I'm just concerned that... Is there a question in this, Councillor Wilson? Only that it would then become a motion. Well, you'd need to either raise a question with the, with the speaker, with the person giving the report, or move I'll on. I'll raise the question first. By looking at your report, Jaime, do you see this as the end of the options for us as a council to proceed anything further with anything more meaningful than what we've got on the table today? Uh, I, I think that I respond to what I'm asked to do. And I am happy to put forward these options. I think there potentially are others that are already in place or that are about to receive some sort of a response in terms of funding. And, I and I'm cognizant that in the previous triennium, the previous council instructed us to proceed with the investigation of two other options. One was the Mabutui Street. The other was the expansion of uh, residential sections throughout the district. Um, I, I think that, again, th this paper, this report does not commit council to anything. And that was never the intent. The intent was to lay out options, but the options as they're presented are really almost a list of options. They don't provide any of the detail that you would need to essentially move forward and discuss them. And eventually, if you decide to, to make a decision as to whether you'd like to proceed or whether you'd like to discard them. Um, Thank you. And um, Councillor Moore. Yeah, I commend you on your report. I think all of it is good, but I am very uncomfortable that council may be involved in the implementation side of affordable housing. I think we can understand in the same instruction, Council Wilson, you need to be either asking at this stage, asking a question or putting motion on the table. Well, I'll, I'll move that, that we, we look at the ways to stimulate incentivization of affordable housing. And I can talk to that. Oh. Um, so, so, sorry. So, this needs, it's his motion, and as you've said it, that your recommendation would be that the motion would be that council look at ways to stimulate the incentivisation of affordable housing. Is that correct? Yes. And before you can speak to it, I need a second to it. I'll second it. So you've now got a second of Councillor Lambert. Do you wish to speak to him? Yes, I, I, I think there's always ways that the council can look at incentivising affordable housing without actually getting involved in the implementation of it. You know, we can look at the amount of rates, the services, the compliance, reducing that so developers can um, get in and build the houses that are required by our um, lower economic um, rate payers or people um, without actually getting them. I think we need to stimulate business to be able to uh, provide these houses and council shouldn't be standing and, you know, be a uh, restrictor in uh, letting some of these things develop. So it's incentivizing through the things we do as a council rather than getting in and, and buying the land and developing the houses. Okay, so we've got a mover and a seconder. I was a second, so Councillor Lambert for seconding. Can you just check if that's the right words, Chance? Yeah, okay. that's as it stands is correct as yeah. you've written up. Looking for speakers to this. Um, I have Councillor Wilson, Councillor Duncan, Councillor Wilson. Um, strongly speaking against what Councillor Warren is suggesting is exactly the body of work that's been presented to us till today. 100% verbatim, it's exactly the body of work that's been presented us to today, which has taken a significant amount of time and council costs to get to this table. And what Councillor Warren sadly is asking for is repetition of what we've already got in front of us. Councillor Duncan, you wish to speak to the motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll 
Um, I'd like to foreshadow a motion. And foreshadow a motion. I'd like to foreshadow number two as it is written um, because I believe that, that that is the next step that what we need to know is the easy to achieve options that as um, Mr Rival has explained on several occasions commits us to nothing but gives us more information. You're foreshadowing that. Um, if we need the words around it, we'll see. So the foreshadowed motion it means that if this motion fails, it's another motion that may be put in its place. So effectively, Councillor Dalgetty, and oh. then I have Councillor Kalkin, Councillor Dalgetty, we've had um, one speaker against, um, effectively by foreshadowing something else, could be deemed that you're speaking against, but I'll let that one lie on the table at the moment. Uh, I'll be speaking against this motion. I agree with Councillor Wilson. Um, um, did I have another Councillor Kalkin? Um, thank you, Your Worship. I, I would also like to speak against the motion um, and just expand on that a little bit with um, the, there are multiple parties that will already be trying to address this issue. Um, I know of a lot of lenders that are trying to address this issue. I know of a lot of um, there, there are central government departments that have been addressing this issue and trying to provide ways or a pathway to home ownership. And I, I just question whether this is our role or duty to be able to, to also support that. So I'm speaking against it. Before we go, it would be useful, Councillor, if you could write out your foreshadowed motion uh, so that it can be transferred to staff. That's right. That's right. Okay, thank you. We've had three speakers against, and any speakers for? motion. Go back to write a reply. Not ex so, um, so I now must put it to the vote. Those in favour of the motion? Motion fails. Your foreshadowed motion and then I'll go to Councillor Loudon. But you were the next speaker and you have the right to do that. Councillor Duncan. Um, the reason why I am supporting number two is because it's it's the natural next step. We need to look at the easy to achieve options without any obligation to go further. Um, and as uh, Mr. Rival has referred to, there are housing groups within the, the Rangatiki, excuse me, who are prepared to and are actually don't actually. Ar don't argue the case until we've got a second. I please. beg your pardon. Is there a seconder to this? Mm. A card of seconding. Right, now you can go and full play. <laughs> there are groups who are interested <clears throat> and are, are furthering um, uh, surveying the community, which is also very um, valuable information for us. Um, but if we can stimulate and incentivise affordable housing, I, I can only see that as, as part of what central government is also looking for us to be doing. And I'm also aware of, in the back of my mind, the risk to our district of the depopulation of rural communities. We're going to need more affordable housing in our communities. Um, so I'm, I can see that, that local government's role is changing and this is something that we'll be, we'll be going into more and more. So we need as much information as we can get. We need to make a ruling here. Um, so, and I will take some advice from the Chief Executive here. In terms of the recommendation two that has been lost, this recommendation, um, which was slight variation to the recommendation two that was originally there, does recommendation three mean pretty much the same thing? As recommendation two? As, in other words, as it's stated there. So the first one is that council look at ways to simulate and incentivise affordable housing. Housing. The third one is that a report be submitted to council meeting discussing what easy to achieve options to, incent to incentivise housing. Is this one and the same? Um, Yes, kind of, Your Worship. Um, 
what um, the original recommendation to now recommendation three sought to um, bring the work of the report you see in front of you to bring to December a list of things that are within that report that could be easy for council to implement should you choose us to do so. Uh, that was the intent of that recommendation, which is now the motion on the floor. That is something we could achieve. That is something our staff are recommending to you. Uh, it differs slightly um, to the current or the motion that was lost, which, which um, took away the work that would have currently done as part of the report. I'll, I'll rule that, that it can stand. Uh, for councillors, what I'm getting at here is if a recommendation that is lost is followed by a recommendation which mirrors the recommendation lost, you can't actually do it. And that was my question. So I will let it, let it stand. Do you wish, having interrupted you, do you wish to speak further on it? Otherwise I'll go for speakers to it. Ask a question, please. I'll take a question, certainly. I'm just interested, please, in terms of central government funding, have we got all the ducks lined up so that we could get central government funding, should it be available? I presume that's through paying or... This needs to be a question related to the motion on the floor. That would be, in my view, the easiest way to get okay. um, affordable housing would be to get funding from central yeah. government. Yeah, all right. So, can you answer that? The answer is don't know, um, but that's precisely what we're trying to provide for you in the report. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because I was suspect that may or may not be easy to achieve, and if it is, it will be in the report, and if it's not, okay. it'll be in the report. But why? Thank you. Looking for speakers to the motion, either for or against. So, Kalkin, have you still got your hand up? Do you wish to speak to this? Or yes, I would, I would like to speak to this, um, and I'm going to speak against the motion. Um, I, I believe it's dangerous, and we need to be very, very cautious around anything that is easy to achieve when it comes to affordable housing, and being very, very clear on any objectives before claiming it to be easy to achieve is something to be mindful of, um, and that's something that worries me immensely. Uh, any other speakers? Question. Councillor. Question. Why is it easy to achieve? Who's that for? The council? I, for my the presumption, it is that this is looking for the low hanging fruit in, in essence around housing solutions as, as opposed to a, a soft, slight inflection, if you like, on um, Councillor Kalkin's view. I need other speakers, otherwise I need to put it to back to a vote. No, I'll put it to the vote of those in favour of the recommendation. One, one, two, three, four. The motion is lost. Uh, no, Councillor Loudon is the next speaker. I need one to ask a question behind me. Um, um, being new to the council, I'm not quite sure of the status of the council housing. I think it's related to this whole um, concept, and um, I don't know what the council housing status is as to is it compliant with health, healthy homes, how many have we got. Um, Certainly, Ms. Prince or um, Jaime can, can give you those stats. Yeah. It's a fair question, certainly. Yeah. Because I, I think it's that that space needs to be addressed properly first before we get into this space. Thank you. Ms. Prince. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we have 72 one bedroom units, um, are quite small, a lot of them, and they're spread throughout the district. Um, we have been maintaining them to the healthy home standards. Some, for example, like the Matua flats in Taihepi, 
um, we couldn't put insulation in the roof or in the ceilings just because of the make of them. But yeah, we've installed heat pumps and have been keeping them. Um, they're also, our policy is that they are for people 65 years and older on a low income. So that's the tag around it. Yes. Is there any move to increase that housing stock? We, um, one of the ideas was with the Toy Street um, property, potentially that it could have been used. I'll go back a step, sorry. There used to be, we've got a council property at 22 Toy Street, um, and a couple of years ago the hall on it was demolished, and potentially an idea was that we could erect community housing on that, and that's part of the business case that we've applied for funding through the federal funding. Um, councillors, I'm not getting a lot of help here, but what I've, if there is no motion on the floor, everything lapses. Um, but bearing in mind that we're going to have to have a series of workshops um, in terms of preparation of the annual plan, where subjects can be brought up for consideration as to where you want staff to concentrate their time, um, could, if in effect, in your minds, um, that that this becomes part of that mix. Councillor Wilson. Your Worship, I, I suggest that um, recommendation three being it locks, it does, it does lapse. I'm also going to suggest that recommendation four, whether or not we can do this or I can do this, um, um, should be removed and I'd like to replace it with another recommendation. Fine, go for it. And the recommendation be that staff uh, continue to endorse or continue to do their work on the Tui Street um, flats as previously uh, endorsed by the previous council of the last tri triennium um, and so to the better off uh, funding being achieved to uh, facilitate that through to a business case. However you want to put that down, Kezia. Um, <laughs> what I'll do is, is I'll um, just to break that down a little bit more. I'll pause council until we have some words, please. So that's your motion, that staff continue to work on the business case for Two Street property subject to federal funding and no further action be undertaken. Uh -huh. uh, looking for a seconder to that, Councillor Carter seconding. You wish to speak to it? Yes, I do. Um, and, and first of all, I appreciate the work that's been done, but to me, this is the only tangible option that we've got in front of us as a council that we can actually action um, to um, to help do the work that we want to that we want to do, um, there are many things that council can do, and many strings that it can pull um, that we would be able to enact with uh, with a partnership with another developer that may come along um, with a range of different things. And I just think that um, going further with this is a waste of staff time mm -hmm. and money. And I think this is the one we should focus on because we have a tangible action, and we know there's a need. Uh, in that part of the uh, part of the country that we've already seen in further reports or our part of our district we've seen a need in further reports or recent reports in time. So. Any speakers to it? <coughs> I'll, I'll okay. speak in favour of the motion um, based on what Councillor Wilson said. Any further speakers? Councillor? Yes, please. I'd like to um, speak in support of this. Uh, because as Councillor Wilson has said, it is something that we have gone over in, on several different, um, in se several different ways. And it seems a very natural and possible 
choice going forward um, and the needs certainly there. Council Loudon, you're speaking for or against? I'll speak for. Uh, uh, Councillors, I'm happy to waive. We've had three speakers for, but I'm, I'll take it. I'd just like to acknowledge the council staff what work they've done in this space so far. I think the picture is a bit bigger, and um, I would like to see um, council housing be sort of looked at. Um, I know you have been, but um, I know that I'd like to be involved in that space personally. Um, um, I'd like to concur with Jared, uh, Councillor Calcum, that um, the risk factors um, council are significant in this, in this space. I can only take you if you're speaking against. Um, can I question that his, his... No, ask, ask a question if, yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. If the <coughs> member, Councillor Hilton, is comfortable with restricting his motion because that seems to exclude a lot of the work that's being done to concentrate only on one aspect. And are you comfortable with... Just his, it's his motion. Um, okay. you, if you disagree with it, you'd have to vote against it. I can answer it if you wish, though. But, uh, through you, <coughs> through you, Chair, uh, yes, I am comfortable with it because it's a one-off item. And I don't believe it restricts us to moving future motions in the future. we we'll take that as a right of reply. I'll take that as a right of reply. Yeah. You can take it as a right of reply. I'll give it as such. <laughs> We've had a right of reply. I now must put it to those in favour. Aye. Those against. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Um, just a comment, probably for us to have taken this further uh, outside of a long-term plan may have been complicated in itself um, because we had a long-term plan position of advocacy rather than progression. Thank you. Um, in terms of item number 12, public excluded, would somebody like to so move that we move into public excluded for the reasons given? Councillor Wilson, Councillor Carter. Uh, those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you to those online. Um, 